Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the hive on Thursday, October 6th. You guys, we have our infamous fun folds class tonight. I hope you're looking forward to making these crazy but fun fun folds with me tonight. Wow, you guys, we had this class. Wow, look at you guys all rolling in already. Wow, look at that. Yes, Elizabeth Fisher, you wear, you are where you need to be. And there's Cindy Runtree already. There's Ann Miller from Sturgeon Bay. Ann, did your cards arrive today? Your, your package, I mailed it out yesterday. And I know in the past, you've gotten them in one day. So I'm Fingers crossed it arrived today, if not tomorrow. Hi, Deb Norman, and there's Melody Miller. You guys are, we're on like instantaneously. I love it. Um, hi, Melody Foy. Hi, Debbie Schultz. Hi, Linda Hunt. There's Donna Grushke and Sandy Wicklander, Vera Anderson. Wow. Okay, let's see. I can find myself right away as well. There it is, you guys. I got a sweatshirt on. <laughs> My fingers are freezing right now. Oh, when I sit in here and work pretty much by myself, my fingers just get like little popsicles. Hi, Becky Roar. So, yeah, that's how that is. So, let's see here. Hi, Sherry Stewart. Hi, Pauline Mays. Um, you guys, I worked on the Radically Retro Swap today. Um, <laughs> my dining room table ended up being full of packages. You guys, when I get them, I don't always... I didn't have my boxes ready to go for groups one, two, or three. And so I basically just let them collect on my dining room table. Hi, Ann Bellinger. Hi, Karen Stegg. And so, oh yeah, it was getting to be the point where Tyler didn't have much room to sit and eat. <laughs> we don't eat at the dining room table very much, but, um, but he does like to have breakfast there. And so I was like, well, it's time to get these cards off the table. And so I opened them all up and categorized them by groups one, two, or three. Hi, Lynn Beasley. Um, hi, Linda Hall. And so hi, Janet Flay. Um, hi, Randy Schultz. Um, so I got all my different boxes. I categorized them. Everybody who is in the Radically Retro Swap with me, um, you definitely um, got an email today uh, saying I've got your cards or I didn't get your cards, all of the above. Hi, Mary Hartman. So that's good. I felt good, you guys. I've been wanting to do that for a little while. And I finally feel like last night and today, I got caught up a bit. <laughs> I got through emails. If you were waiting for emails, I couldn't believe how excited you guys are about that wonderful world class that I had, um, that I showed pictures from last week. I just couldn't believe it. I had about just 20 emails on that class alone. <laughs> and, and I didn't have a moment this week to work on it until about an hour and a half ago. And so I'm super excited to announce that if you go to my website, um, hi, Karen Cotton. Um, hi, Elizabeth Fisher. If you go to my website, you will see that I created an event for it already. I found a day and a time. It's going to be an afternoon class, you guys. I don't have more night time. <laughs> I don't have more nights free in my schedule because I'm already doing classes almost every night except for Tuesday. And I can't do a date night, um, a class on date night. So I am looking to see how I, I was trying to do this as a covert operation. But as you can see, I am having a hard time add to the story. I'm trying to share the, this link um, in my Facebook group at the same time that I'm trying to talk to you. And I don't know if you can tell I'm a little bit not oh there it is I was looking for one little spot I just had to focus for a moment <laughs> yeah Pauline your swap should be here Tuesday and that's awesome um so uh this is gonna be tricky business here catch me live you guys I'm gonna just do this while we're live catch I'm gonna, if I concentrate on a second here catch me live for fun folds right now you know there are people that are probably looking for me on Facebook you guys um and for fun folds card class um and you guys got me really quick which is awesome all right so we're gonna do that and we're gonna hit paste i got the paste copying pasting down all right now i think i got it okay so what i'm trying to do is help transition people from facebook to catching me here on youtube and so yay i think that we have that all right post i want to post be done <laughs> all right cool now i think i'm back on track I got to figure out, like, this is my second time doing this, you guys. I had the soft seedlings class on, it was on Tuesday. And so I had to figure out that process on Tuesday without you guys necessarily knowing. <laughs> it's going to take me a few minutes, a few classes to figure that out. Hi, Cindy Hutchings. So now I got to get back to my comments here. All right, let's see. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you guys, I'm trying. Where do I get to my comments? I just had my comments because I like to watch the comments in both. Um, did I say which card is first for tonight? No, Melanie Foy. I just fly with cards. I don't know which one I want to do first. I was thinking about soft ceilings, but I'm not certain. So, hmm, let's go out and we're going to come back in and live chat. Oh, there it is. Perfect. <laughs> Yay. It's different, you guys, being in YouTube. So, hi, Deanna Stell. Um, it's, it's different. So, Kelly was here this afternoon and she had never done anything really in YouTube. So I was working with her, teaching her, transitioning with her, how we're gonna do the Technique Thursday. Uh, Sherry Everett found us. Yay, hi, Laura, Janice. They're tricky, I have to comment on my phone and watch on my big screen and they aren't in sync, oh no. <laughs> it's all gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, you guys, it really is. Hi, Carissa Alberts. So Feline has her swap cards on the mail. So we talked a little bit about the retro swap. So you guys should have gotten an email. We talked a little bit about the wonderful world class. Hi, Mary Carls from Jericho. Um, I will show them. And what I was saying to you guys is I just created the event on my website. I always do that first. And I created the online version first. I'm looking at Wednesday, November 2nd at 1 p.m. Uh, I think that... I had mentioned I don't have more nights free, so it's going to be an afternoon class, but you guys do not fret at all because you can always catch the replay, right? A lot of people work off of the replay anyways, uh, so you can not necessarily catch it live. So, um, so that's going to be the online version. And then the next day on November 3rd, I'm actually going to be doing an in-person version at one in the afternoon. So again, <laughs> just filled up two afternoons with classes, you guys, but that is awesome because... You guys, I had 39 people that signed up for this class. Carissa, are you watching? Did you hear that? 39 people. <laughs> and so I figured out a way. Yay. Hi, Tisha Dorton. <laughs> um, hi, Kathy Jackson from Myola, Wisconsin. So half the people have their own paper, which is awesome. So I took $10 off for that pricing. Um, hi, Pam Leahy. And then the other, what I'm going to do, you guys, when Chris and I worked on these cards together, we designed the cards in a manner that only half the pack of paper was used. So what I thought of, I woke up thinking about this, that why not split the packs of paper? Um, I've got enough stamp sets for everybody. So I actually have 28 then, because I had mentioned I only had 14. Well, I really have 28 because I'm going to divide the paper in half. And that works. And so that way more people can sign up and not worry have to, about the paper. So there were some people that didn't want to use their own paper, but I was like, well, if you have the paper and some people don't have the paper, you know, you, 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 I was like, let's put you for using your own paper so that we can accommodate people that don't have paper. And you guys, now that I split the pack, it's going to be perfect. So all in all, you can already go to my website. It's on November 2nd. You can check out the details. It was about what I said for pricing. Uh, I think I'm going to do, it was at $60 for if you don't want paper and it, I take $10 off if you have your own pack of paper. And so there isn't an additional cost if you want it mailed. There's also a convenience fee if you pay via the website. So if you want that cash check pricing, you know, where you save a little money, you'll reach out to me and I'll, um, you can pay the cash check prices. Hi, Jean Terwilliger. Hi, Karen Wetstein. So speaking of Karen Wetstein, <laughs> we did good, Carissa. I can't wait to work on the Ringed with Nature cards, you guys, because we're going to do the same thing for Ringed with Nature. But I saw Karen Wetstein's name pop up, you guys. So Karen Wetstein proofread my PDF for the fun folds for tonight. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I sent out the PDF yesterday before she proofread it. I didn't get it to her till the last minute and she was not available at that time, which was perfectly fine. I knew this going into it, but I sent it out anyways because I knew you guys wanted to start working on stamping or you wanted to start working on things. So I made a deal that come tomorrow, once I have this video link added to the PDF, I would email it back to everybody with the updates. And so use the one that I emailed yesterday as a guide, but delete it as soon as you get my new one. <laughs> so hi, Doris Monson. Um, Janice, Janice says my witness Ah, got it. <laughs> Laura. Laura said that Janice is her witness protection name. So I'm not sure, Laura, what your real last name is. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say it if I know it, though. Maybe I shouldn't know it. So I would have to look at your profile picture to see if I know which Laura you are. So, okay. Fun folds, you guys. Um, okay. We're going to be doing four fun folds tonight, you guys. We did this class in person last night with 15 people. 
Oh, I think almost everybody was ready for a drink at the end. Not because they were bad. It's just, it's a lot. Um, hi, Judy Sharp. Yay, you found me. So um, yeah, because we're already up to 55 people. I would anticipate, you know, like I would think fit, I should be around 100 people watching with Fun Folds, but we still have time to bring more people over from maybe being on Facebook to finding me here. So that's awesome. Um, so you guys, there is a little bit of work with these Fun Folds. Uh, I did mail out your kits. And you have to do two things on them, I realized. I knew one going into it that I didn't cut one of your white pages or pieces a half inch off. But during class last night, I figured out that I didn't cut one of your uh, cherry cobbler pieces with the right length. And But that's okay. I'm going to show you from start to finish on that one because you probably want to see the whole process of how I went about it. So we are going to be doing fun folds in a little bit. Um, Oh, the wind, it's really windy. It's windy. I heard the leaves rustling outside. You guys, it's getting to be warm, cold with the weather turning and the leaves. I have a beautiful tree right outside here that is bright, bright orangey yellow. It's very pretty. So um, before I get going on fun folds though, you guys, I do want to share with you what's coming up really quickly because I know I did the showcase video, uh, but I'm trying to get a really good idea on how many to make for two of the classes. So I have an idea for ink, paper, scissors with the gnomes. I'm pretty set on that, I think. But I have sweetest candy cane or Chris, sweetest Christmas class coming up. And I don't know how many to plan for, um, how many kits to make up. And so I want to show you guys the cards. I want to show you the wonderful world again, show you what's coming up over the next week so that if anybody still needs to get signed up to get on the horn and do that so I can better forecast. Hi, Becky Schlossnagel. Oh, Deb Norman, whoop, whoop. be sure to hit the thumbs up, you guys. Share this video and also hit the thumbs up if you can. I would greatly appreciate it. So, you guys, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly. Uh, just to show you the cards, say the name of the class. You can always find these on my website. All of the cover photos have been added to my website at this point. That's what I worked on this afternoon for like the last three hours. Um, I'm working on creating the Facebook events. Uh, somebody, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. And they said they couldn't find things on, on Facebook. I said, that's because Facebook is stupid. <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I've heard so many people tell me they're having problems with Facebook that I'm just trying to like be done with Facebook as much as possible, but still be there if I with what I need to be there for, right? So I still create events there, but I don't create them there first, you guys. Everything that you need that is mine, you can find it on my website, cardsbycrispy.com. Um, my events are there. Um almost everything is there. My PDF schedule, my newsletter, that's where you go your home base. So I was trying to teach her that, you know, go to my website, find the events there. And then if you're looking for one of my past videos, if you have the day or approximately the month, you can like select on my events calendar. And I always save the link for the video as the first thing in the description after the class passes. So you don't even have to go searching in Facebook for it. So, uh, so that's what, you know, just a reminder, like use that as home base is my website versus trying to use Facebook because I'm done like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm over Facebook now. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, so this is what we got coming up. So this is the Apple Harvest class that's next week. Um, I have it on Monday. Diane Bogenhagen has it the following Tuesday. So three cards and this one is product based. I'm sorry. It's free with an order or you can pay for it right out. So that's already kitted, you guys. I have maybe seven left of that one um, going into next week. This is the monthly class, and this is next week, Thursday. And it's you could pay for it right out, or you could get it free with an order. And that one, I maybe have seven or eight left as well. So winding down on that one. And then for the sweet one, this is the one I'm really wondering about. Um, the PDF for this class is there. Yes, um, Elizabeth Fisher, I just saw your comment. Um, hi, Hildy. Will you be able to post our pictures for Mystery Card on YouTube? No, so here's the thing. That's a good question about that, Donna. No, so I'm still gonna continue to create my events in Facebook alongside my events in my website, but always know that like my website, I can book events out for as long as far out as I want. Facebook only lets you create things for a certain period of time and like, post stuff a certain like period out with scheduling. And so for the mystery card, the live will be in YouTube, right? But the cards that you share will still need to be in the Facebook, I believe. I haven't figured out how to do that posting in YouTube. 
if I figure out a way, we might transition it. But for now, mystery card posting your cards will still be in the event in Facebook like it normally has been. That won't change. Just I'm not going to be doing live classes in Facebook. I'm still going to use Facebook as much as I need to for doing things. Like you can schedule posts and you can, you know, have interaction and share things, right? So Facebook still has a purpose, but I'm trying to transition the live classes away from it. So, all right, this is the one, you guys, where I need your help. If you're going to sign up for this, please get on the ball and get signed up for it so I can better forecast. Because once I have a good idea, then I usually make maybe 10 to 15 more because they usually do go within like the week of class or after class. And so this is the sweet bundle class that is featured for this month. You guys, there's the candy canes are not stamped. They're actually the designer paper and you'll get your candy canes um, and you'll just fussy cut them yourselves. You really need a sentiment, a sentiment, a sentiment. And in this case, that banner is stamped, but you could sponge the edges of it if you like. So, okay, you're okay. Good. I'm glad that helped. That was a good question, Donna. Um, so this one, you guys, is the sweet Christmas class. The wonderful world that we keep talking about, you guys. I am gonna make four more cards. That is my goal. So I'm going to show you eight. I made these eight with Carissa, but there's ugh, there's either three or four more flowers that were in that piece of paper. So depending on how many big flowers there are, if there's three or four more, that's how many more cards I'm going to make. And that, so this class is going to be either 11 or 12 cards. Okay. So got to look at what I have left for the flowers, but you, this is a product-based class. It's a fee only. You can't get it free with an order. Um, and it's going to be making these different cards. And so this is the one where you would, you're going to get, so yes, Wonderful World is retired. The stamp set is going to be included in your, um, it's included in your goodie bag along with a half a pack of paper, the two rolls of ribbon and embellishments. You guys, I haven't even had a moment to embellish my cards yet, but they're going to have some iridescent rhinestones on them. You can make the program live ahead on YouTube and it sends automatic notifications to your subscribers. Boom, Hildy. I'm going to figure out how to do that. <laughs> I'm going to make that happen. All right. When is the paper for that coming back for, in for the candy canes? Uh, Laura Sullivan, I saw it like the end of October, something like October 26th, 27th. And you know what, Laura, I challenge you to go log into your demo account and look at the inventory status report because you have access to it. Um, it's under ordering inventory status report. Just click on it and it'll take you and it'll show you what the date is. I believe it's the end of October though. So um, then here's another one, and another one, and then another one. So there's going to be either three or four more as well. And then you guys, the gnomes look like this in case you still want to get on for the gnomes here. Um, this is the ink, paper, scissors. That's going to be at the end of the month. And then I've got a little bit of a fun fold here with this guy. Okay, then there's one more class that's also ready to go, and it's the stamp -a stack <laughs> And this one um, includes, um, it's a product-based class as well. So we're going to make four cards, four of each card, you guys. So this is going to be called a stamp -a stack It goes like that. So you're going to make four of each card. So this one is 16 in the class. Hi, Elaine Rebeck. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, oh, Doris loves the cards. Awesome. Um, yes, Mary Carls, you can sign up for the class. Um, and at this point, you guys, because, because I may, I woke up with the, I don't know why I woke up with it. I woke up with the idea of like, why not split the designer paper so that, because you only need not even half the pack. So I have like 20, no, no, no I have 12 more spots then. Okay. Available. Hang on. Let me just set this here. So I had 14 on my list for needing the paper. And now that I'm splitting it, that, that means I have room for 12 more people who need the paper. I still want it to go with needing the paper because if you definitely have the designer paper at home already in your, your vault or your arsenal, then you could use it easily and, and I'd save the $10. So Linda Hall, is October 24th is the date for most of them. Oh, that is very true, Linda Hall. I looked at that too and I saw, wow, October 24th. I had a little thought actually, who was, oh, Judy Immel was over last night um, and um, we were talking about it. She was here for class. Um, Becky Rohrer, I'll get you signed up for the uh, Sweetest Christmas class. I got you on the list. <clears throat> and then uh, Karen Cotton as well. I saw your comment there. So you guys saw that they just opened up in Ireland and Belgium. I think they opened up two new distribution centers. And so what we were thinking is 
we had a thought or a hunch. I have no idea if it's right or not, but we were like, well, what if they moved a bunch of inventory over there to help with that opening? And then it kind of like hurt our inventory levels. I have no idea. Hi, Anne Diaquisto. <coughs> so I, I don't know if that's the case, but that's why it's like, well, October 24th, that could have been the shipment that was meant to help out the Belgian and Ireland go live or launch. And then all of a sudden we helped them out in, in the U.S., right? And they brought, it's just my thought. Judy saw it. Like we thought maybe that could be it. But yeah, October 24th was like the majority of everything. Um, if you have the paper, the stamp isn't needed either. So how I'm going to do the Wonderful World class, you guys, that you have two options. You either get it with the paper and the stamp set or you use your own paper and you don't need the stamp set. I have an abundance of stamp sets because I use a lot of the paper for my classes. So I ended up with extra stamp sets. I have enough stamp sets. I have 28 stamp sets, you guys. <laughs> I do because I use this paper in all my celebration celebrations, the two part, the classes. And so I ended up with, I needed paper. So I have stamp sets. So if you get the class with me with paper, you'll get the stamp set. It's just an add on bonus, right? Cause I don't need them all. And so if you don't need the paper, then you can use your stamp set to like stamp your insides if you want to, but you don't need the stamp set at all for the class because you're using the designer series paper with the flowers. So if I am not on the gnomes, can you please add me? Yes, Feline. So can you message me that too? Because I keep track of ink, paper, scissors in my computer, which is over there and I can't just write it down <laughs> really quick. Oh, so awesome, Pamela Leahy, yay, yay. So Jeannie Parker uh, was the one that asked for somebody to take on. And so Jeannie Parker, if you're watching, just know that Pamela Leahy is helping you out by taking your Radically Retro Swap Group 1. So yay. Hi, Gwen Petrashek. I must have done something wrong because I didn't get enough vocation that you were live. Sorry, I'm late. No worries, Gwen. We aren't even started. Hi, Sherry Martin. Oh, thanks for sharing, Sherry Martin. <laughs> that's a lot of shoes. <laughs> All right, so that's a little bit about the classes that are coming up, guys. Um, again, I always so greatly appreciate when you sign up early. It really helps me to, to really forecast and plan how many card kits are going to be needing to get made up. Um, so that I can always accommodate the people that do sign up towards the end because for whatever reason um, they made a decision or something happened and they decided they wanted or maybe it's their first time even seeing the card. So um, hi, Cindy Runtree. Did you click on the bell and select all? So you guys, I was looking at my analytics in YouTube and <clears throat> they have a range that for people who have YouTube channels that the normal range that people that are subscribed they can set their notifications to all is generally between 10 and 30%. And you guys, mine was 33%. So I was above the range. So the majority of you who are subscribed also have your notifications set to see all my stuff. <laughs> like when I'm live. So I love it. That was awesome. I like that one. Um, so yeah. So you guys, again, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. Just yeah. Cause you know what? Life gets busy and you might not be like thinking, oh, I have class or I want to watch class or I want to watch her tonight that you might miss when I'm actually live. And so those little notifications do come in handy. Um, Trudy from Bogart, Georgia. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you could make it. So you guys, oh, roll call. Are you ready for this roll call, you guys? <laughs> My biggest class ever. I have to say we did 100 just to say that we wanted to do 100. And then when it all said and done, you guys, I over, <laughs> I over committed by three people. So yeah. So, and Diaquisto, I am making four more sets and you had already reached out to me yesterday and wanted the class. So I'm making four sets. That's why I can't do more than that. I'm making four, three for the people that I already said yes to before I counted my numbers and to Anne, because I always make them in groups of four, you guys. So, so they're all gone. You guys, fun folds is, un is all accounted for. And then it's already in the hole. <laughs> so, so it's a lot of people, you guys. Um, so we're going to run through roll call. I'm going to list off 71 people. So if you're watching and live with me, um, or watching the replay call out that you're here, and um, give us a shout out. You don't have to be live with me. Just remember, you can always catch the replay if you're ever doing a class with me. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, I had to take in a little air there for this. Take a deep breath. All right, we got first and foremost on the list, the first person to sign up for this class was Donna Grushke. Yay, Donna. And then Carol Solinsky, uh, Laura Sullivan, Bev Smith, Barbara Moynan, Faye Godby, Lynn Beasley, Miss Debbie Schultz, Buzzy at Work, Mary Lemke, Holly Gentry, Carolyn Ketchmark, 
Hildy Vilches, Sherry Martin, Judy Bobo, Barbara Godby, Miss Ann Miller from Sturgeon Bay, Barbara Barco, Pat Thomas, Jean Terwilliger, Pat Detlefson, Gwen Patrashek, Helen Chase, Feline Mays, Sherry Everett, Sherry Stewart, Brenda Loveless, Kathy Dolly Nagari, Becky Gandolfo, Becky Rohr. I told you girls, you always sign up one after another. You guys are on the same wavelength. <laughs> and then Ann Bellinger, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin, Mary Hartman. All right, then we're gonna go to Karen Cotton, Joanne McDonald, Vera Anderson, Doris Munson, Sarah Merchant, Sue Somerville, Shirley Malarkey, Jeannie Parker, Sandy Wicklander, Mary Carls, Jody Storman, Donna Jarman, Lila Erickson, Linda Hunt, Melanie Foy, Tammy Steckling, Penny Powell, Carla Lake, Cheryl Thomas, Vicki Thomason, Marsha Long, Sherry Hughes, Barb Johnson, Angela Knudsen, Pam Newhauser, Elizabeth Fisher, Sue Spiegner, Carol Alanis, Carol's first class with me. I'm so excited for that, Carol. Carol Engelbrecht. <laughs> no, I had back-to-back -back Carols that signed up. Feline Mays. Again, I she's a two, and so did Gwen. Uh, Linda Hindi, and then Linda Hall, you guys. So I have my three Linda H's. Linda Hunt, Linda Hall, and Linda Hindi. Ooh, Deanna Stell. And then we have Latokia Trigg, Christina Heiser, Karen Stagg, Angela Orvis, and Anne Diaquisto. Anne, I added you. We're going to figure it out. Oh, we had 15 last night. We have eight tomorrow night, and we have nah, 10 on Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, bleh, Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So you guys, I'm doing this class four days in a row. So you're, we're halfway through. We had my guinea, my guineas here last night. <laughs> well, they're not guinea pigs. We call them guineas, right? So, because we were saying, we're well, gonna be a guinea pig. No, I don't want to be a pig. So we were, okay, you're gonna be a guinea. Yes, guinea. <laughs> so we got a bunch of guineas here um, last night, and so we figured out a lot. It was good a refresher because you guys, these cards were designed Labor Day weekend. Chris and I, we stamped on Labor Day. Uh, what I was planning to do fell through, and so in lieu of it. Carissa and I stamped and it was great because <laughs> oh it was fun and it's but it was a month ago right so it's nice to refresh this with a class last night so all right a bunch of you guys are here that is awesome um I'm gonna do just to remind everybody to help me remember what I wanted to later not to like put this on you guys but we have a lot of prizes to do tonight I have the ink paper scissors splendid thoughts uh those card classes Oh, okay, Feline. That's good to know. Um, if I if I have somebody that isn't already signed up for the class that wants it, but I'll be honest, one one's not gonna help me. <laughs> oh, I don't think one's gonna help me. I think I need three. <laughs> so, um, and that's on me. Like I should have added my numbers up, but you know what? The more the merrier with this one, you guys. I can officially say that we have 104 for this class, which is awesome. Hi, Randy Schultz. <coughs> so we have. Um, ink, paper, scissors, you guys, we're going to do top fan, we're going to do monthly card challenge, class card challenge, the free shipping promotion challenge, or the free shipping drawing, uh, and um, I have the VIP Leaves of Holly to give away, and I feel like there was, oh, the newsletter winner is going to be announced, you guys, so, and the door prize drawing for the class, okay? So all the people who placed an order, I'll do a drawing for somebody to win a prize. So there's a lot to do at the end of class too. So you guys, I'm gonna get started then. <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm like, we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna take a drink of water because you guys, I'm gonna be talking a lot and there's a lot of hot air coming out of me tonight. I realized that these two of the cards are pretty like mm, good, but the other two are a little more involved. <laughs> So, Karen says she's watching tonight, all the stuff packed. Okay, that sounds good. You guys, this one too. Um, so, if this one, this is a good one to watch the video. And I referenced that in the PDF. Uh, Karen Wetstein said to me, <laughs> she couldn't imagine, like basically was like, it was hard enough to write the PDF and it was hard enough for somebody to proofread the PDF. So, thank you to Karen, you guys. She came up with a list of these many things I need to fix on the PDF. So, it was there to help as a guide to get you guys started, but it's definitely by all means not done. We're gonna, I'm gonna update that PDF at some point tomorrow and send a revised one out. So <clears throat> we're gonna start, well, should we start with an, a hard one? I guess you guys, I'm thinking maybe we start with hard one and we save the easy one for last. 
<gasps> okay. We're going to start with the poinsettia card, okay, guys? <laughs> Just to make you get done. So, okay. <clears throat> Mentally preparing myself because we are going to be scoring and I don't want to cut anything wrong. <laughs> and you guys are going to have to do some of this cutting yourself. And I just realized I have all my trimmers over there. So, all right. <clears throat> are you guys ready for it? Are you, who's ready for a fun fold? Whoop, whoop, excited the most. Put some thumbs ups. I don't even know if we have thumbs ups or loves on here. How do we do it? We got thumbs ups, I think. Um, all right, I meet up with my, oh yeah, she survived the hurricane. That's awesome, Melanie. I would hope so. I know that, I read the news that maybe 30, the last I saw the news about 36 people had passed away, um, and I, that was a week ago, so I'm hoping there wasn't more than that. That hurricane really did a number on Florida. Oh my goodness. I lived in Miami for five years from 2005 to 2009, you guys. And so I experienced my fair share of hurricanes. And I'm sure my mom was just as worried as you were, Melanie, about your daughter being there. <laughs> so I can relate. And my mom can relate. So, uh, you guys, here's my information in case you're new to me watching for the first time. Cards by Christine is my Facebook page and YouTube channel. If you need to email me, here's my email. My website is here. My phone number is here. You guys, I accept phone calls. I talk to you. I'm not a robot. I answer calls. <laughs> I get back to you and make sure that you you have everything you need taken care of. <laughs> so you guys got a lot of bits and parts. So you guys, this was the kit that had this piece of paper was folded in half in your kit. And um, I'm going to go grab how it looks so you have an idea <clears throat> because my piece here is not scored at all. So I'm going to show you what you guys got in your kit. Over 100. Yes, I know 104 for this class. <clears throat> Over 100 now. So you guys are seeing 100 people watching. How? Because I see 71. I don't know, like, it's awesome if we have 100. That'd be great. I just thought I saw 71. You guys, let's go over what's in your kit, though, okay? So that you know what's in here. I promise you, 99.99% of you are going to have everything in your kit. And if you think you're missing something, you need to look. Because in class last night, not to, like, I'm not going to say any names, but a few people said they were missing things. And after further review and looking everywhere, we found them. One on a chair, one on the floor, and the other three found them actually in their card kits. The red gems were stuck to the back of their paper because of static electricity. <clears throat> so just know that we triple checked everybody's kits and there's a lot of bits and parts. So as you pull them out, my mom said, be very careful so that you don't lose them and catch them on your arm, catch them in your hair, catch them on your boobs, under your, just everywhere, right? They go everywhere. So just little parts. So we're gonna go through what's in here. So this is the card we're gonna be making. Oh, 71. Oh, you guys, I'm not sure what you're... <laughs> I'm seeing 72, 71, 72, and then Elizabeth Fisher said died. Oh, they are talking about deaths in Florida. Oh, <laughs> not to laugh, but I'm glad that we figured that out. Okay, okay, good. So not good, but over 100. That's a lot of people. Wowzers, you guys. Wow, okay. Because I was talking about people watching me live and then we change topic. So I get it now. I get it. I get it. Makes sense. We got that one figured out. <laughs> All right, you guys, we need three gold leaves. You guys will have a piece of paper that looks similar to this. It's maybe a little bit shorter. Um, it is for your stamping of your poinsettias. It's going to be big enough for you to stamp your poinsettias. I have a little extra there, but just so you know, my magic of TV, I've got two of mine done already. Um, you're going to have two of your stick stretching, bleh, stitched rectangles that are actually from the stamp set. So the stamp set and dies look like this. It's called Marius Moments. There's a whole bunch of dies. This outline is what was used with the embossing folder to do this detailing. It's called a hybrid embossing folder and it embosses at the same time. I've blasted you up on my TV. I wanted to watch first and then make them. Now I can see the cards so much better on the big screen. Yay, Jean, I love it. <laughs> All right, so that one, you guys, is in your kit. We do have to do a little homework on here, potentially. All right, so we're gonna talk about this when we get to it, okay? But I wanted to show you what stamps that we used for this one. All right, so you have this, <clears throat> your two rectangles. This right here, you guys, it comes from your all that dies. All right, so it's just a die cut. Thank you to Tammy Sokolik. Wow. Um, she die cut everything for this class, you guys. Amazing. Lots of little bits and parts. Uh, she she deserves a round of applause. Okay, go Tammy. She got it. She rocked it, you guys. Um, Anna was helping me with the card benefit, right? 60 
eight times five kits for that. And so Tammy took this one on. And so you have a piece of designer paper, which goes down here. You have a piece of designer paper, which ultimately goes right here. You have another one for the inside. So you have three pieces of designer paper, you guys. They all come from the Holly Berry Designer Series paper. You have a <clears throat> what I refer to as an arm. Um, it's evening evergreen. Three and a quarter by seven and a quarter scored at three and a quarter. Okay. You have this piece, which is for the mechanism. Okay. Glad it's sliced at the bottom. Yes. <laughs> and then you guys have a piece of gold. All right. So we're going to talk about this piece first, though, because <clears throat> this is your base. And I'm going to go get my cutting tool because I want to show you how to cut it. Okay. Here's a cutting tool. This is what you guys had in your kit. <clears throat> I inadvertently cut, I, I didn't cut it, but I, I, yeah. Long story short is I didn't remember that it needed to be nine and three quarters, okay? <clears throat> so what you guys got in your kit is this. It's scored at three eighths inch all the way down. It's on both sides, three eighths, right? And then it's five and a half in the middle. So this is what you literally got in your kit. Great. So what you're going to want, I don't, I don't want to, well, you know what? Somebody won't mind. <clears throat> I'm going to do it on both to show you guys twice because I want to do it for my card and I know somebody won't mind if I do it already in class. So you guys in your kit, that piece of paper was too long and I, I didn't catch that. So no worries. It can be cut to the right length. It needs to be nine and three quarters. So what you need to do, it does not matter at this moment in time which side you cut off. They're the same right now. So you want to take this and put it at nine and three quarters. So in the PDF tutorial, it does say nine and three quarters by five, which is the right thing. But when I, I just didn't cut all of yours at nine and three quarters and take this off. Now, you guys, this is a scrap. <coughs> you can do with it what you like. Use it for something. Make a pretty card in the future. <laughs> That's what I told everybody in class last night. Now this matters because this is going to become your top. This is going to become your bottom. These we need to make into tabs on the sides. These need to come off because I couldn't fit it in your envelope, you guys, because I was not all about cutting all of those off for you guys. A hundred of them? No, nope, couldn't do it. I thought, you guys, I'm going to show you how to do this so that you feel confident in doing this on your own to make another card. Ultimately, what needs to happen, this, these sides just need to get cut off. So when we designed it, we designed it in a way that the three ace is cut off of these two bottom sides, and then that creates tabs here. So what you want to do on your machine, your, your, your cutting trimmer, you want to I go to basically three ace. Let's see if I can see three ace on here. There's one, two. Oh man, where's even three ace? Here, let's go on this side. So there's one, two, three. Okay, so at three ace, you can use a scissors if you want, right? I'm not stopping you. If you would prefer to take a scissors and trim up, just know you're not going to have a nice straight edge with it. That's why I want to use my trimmer. So I'm going to do this again, one, two, three. So three A's right here. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hold this down and I wanna cut to the five and a half inch mark because we're just cutting that little side strip off maybe. So, and you don't have to go all the way to the score line because you can follow up with your scissors for part of it. So this is what we did in class last night. <clears throat> I cut it like that far. I did help people in class last night. So now what we need to do is cut this too. So I'm gonna actually go to the bottom so when you use a trimmer like this, it sometimes leaves a rolled edge. You can take and smooth it out or use your bone folder and smooth it out. But sometimes what I like to do is just flip my paper over and cut it from the same way. So the same, like it's still the top now. So one, two, three, all I'm doing is finding three eighths inch <clears throat> and putting this down. And now I just cut that off. Okay, so this is just a start, you guys. This is not done. I'm just cutting little flappers off. Okay, so that's it for right now for the cutting. 
<clears throat> tool here, our, our paper trimmer. Now where you could do is take your scissors and snip up the rest. And then what I did is I made a tab. I cut it at like a little angle here, right? Like that. Okay, and then you can do the same on this side. And then I'm gonna make a little tab. If you cut it straight like this, it's gonna get wedged in the corner. So if you cut it at a little bit of an angle, like that. So if you see here now, I kind of cut those at an angle. I see I was in a little hair, it's still gonna be okay, right? If you're right on the score line, that would be perfect. Now these strips, they're garbage. Do with them what you want. <laughs> if you wanna salvage them, Melanie Foy will make something pretty out of them. I know that. <clears throat> All right, so now we've got, this is our bottom, and now we have these little, oh, my little leaves are flying. Um, we gotta bring your little tabs in, use your bone folder, and burnish them. Thanks for sharing, Betty Ray, I appreciate it. <clears throat> you guys, we got the frog going on today. I think we got cold air that came in overnight, and temperatures changed for us today, big time. It was a beautiful day in the city yesterday. So I've got like this little hangy, like the hangnail hanging on up here, just... I'm gonna cut it off. I don't need it there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's what we've got now. This is going to be what forms our card base. All right, so cool, cool beans. So that was probably gonna be the hardest part for you. It's too small. Come on, those are little baby strips. You can make a scrappy, strippy card technique. <laughs> All right, that might be the hard, one of the harder things of this card. The other part is gonna be doing the mechanism, but we'll walk you through that. <clears throat> now we're going to decorate. So this piece right here is the one that comes out like this, right? So again, grab that bone folder, burnish it. I'm going to do the first thing is this ribbon. Now, I learned something in class last night. My gals were so smart. I created these little tabs, and the more that people pull on my little tabs, <laughs> the more sad they look. They are like all frayed and sad. But they had a great idea. They said, well, why, why would you do that if you can just make a tab? <clears throat> Excuse me. So what they did is they folded the bottom and then stapled the loose ends up, right? I'm like, oh, that's genius. Why didn't we think of that, right, Krista? So the thing is, some people use tear and tape. Some people use glue dots. Some people use tape runner. I tell you, whatever you want to use is fine, but you want something strong because people are going to be pulling this and you don't want it to pull out with tape. <clears throat> that's why we did use a stapler. And the thing is, if you use a stapler, um, when you go to staple it, <clears throat> you want to have the smooth side here, not the rough side here. You want the smooth side out and then the rough side up because you're going to put the designer paper over it. And it's going to be, nope, the folded card is not four and seven eighths. Elizabeth, we started at five inches and we took off three eighths on one side, and we took off three eighths on another side. That equals four and a quarter. So this is a traditional A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half. So the folded, I guess if you're asking the folded card originally how it came was actually five inches. It was not four and seven eighths. But it starts at five, you're cutting off three eighths on each side, and that makes it four and a quarter. Okay. So good question though. I hope that help, makes sense. So we're going to take this <clears throat> and make my little loopy. I'm going to hold it right in the middle and we got to do this before we put our designer paper down because you want to glue the designer paper over the top of it. So now what I'm going to do is hold the stapler upside down and this is hard. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, this might be the hardest thing out of the whole thing, right? Because I want to see it this way. So I might just hold this this way because I'm going to hold the stapler. Oh, I wonder how they did this in class last night. Let's see if that works. Oh, I got it. Very nice. So I got my staple back here now. <laughs> I got my tab. I'm good. Yay. <clears throat> it's like a shot in the dark almost there. Now we can decorate this guy. We're going to talk about this. So you have your pieces of designer paper. So you're gonna need the stripes, you're gonna use the holly berries, and you're gonna use the red one here. So I know, if you wanna use the holly berries and flip these all around, you guys can, it's your card. Make it however you want. 
but I have on here the holly berries down and then the red is there so that there's some contrast, right? All right, so let's get glue happy for a moment in time. Whoa, yeah, look what I almost did. I almost glued the wrong side. I had to look at that for a minute. Okay, I love this paper here. That's a really pretty one, but sorry, it gets covered up tonight. So this right here, this will go on the bottom edge down here. All right, you don't need a lot because once the top is down, it gets covered, right? All right, so there's that. This one goes on the top of your arm. I'm gonna call this thing the arm. I don't know why, but it's an arm to me. And then this is your inside bottom designer paper. So it's like a baby little card here. You're gonna have a little knob here from your staple, but that's okay. All right. That's the mechanism. We're not done scoring actually. So you guys, I already scored your mechanisms. I'll show you what I did as long as I got it right here. I got the scoring tool. <laughs> Where did I put it? <laughs> oh, it's right here. <laughs> so <clears throat> this guy is like two and three quarters by two and three eighths. I've already got it scored for you guys, so you don't have to worry about doing this. But all it is, it's scored. So this is two and three eighths. So what I did is I scored it at two, and then I flipped it over, and I scored it at two. So basically three eighths from each side. And then on this mechanism, you guys, you got to curve it. It will not work if you leave the paper like this. So what you need to do is find some sort of a round tool, like a pencil or a pen, and you're just going to roll the paper. I've seen people do this with um, with cards that they use clear envelopes instead, but ultimately you guys, you want that to be rolled paper like that, okay? So that's prepped and ready to go. <clears throat> so you guys, I have a treat for you too. I saved the cards. Let's see if I can find them before I forget to do this. I have the cards here that I used for the inspiration for all of these cards. And I might forget to show you later. So we're gonna look at these just to distract you with eye candy for a minute here. So I don't wanna forget to share these with you later. So, cause I just thought of it. This mechanism, when Chris and I designed this, we used paper. When this is Jennifer Merle Hampshire did this one. She, so different bottom, whole different tab kind of structure. She, made hers pop up and she has an extra pop up, right? So cool. And she used a clear envelope. <laughs> then Chris has said, I'm the German and we're an expert. Sandy says, you have have you on my 55 inch big screen. Awesome, I love it, yay. <laughs> I love it. Give us a second to eat a stapler. I don't think you wanna eat a stapler. I think you wanna find a stapler. <laughs> All right, so that one was, um, Jennifer's and Jennifer did hers differently. She glued her flaps on the back. We wanted to have them not be seen. So that's why we glued ours on the inside. This one comes from, oh my gosh, I want to say Bobby McPherson. And yes, oh, I was right. Yes, she wrote her name. She sent me this for my birthday card. It says, You inspire me. And she's got a butterfly that pops up in there. So Bobby sent me that for my birthday card. So pretty. And she made a comment down here. It says, Pull, right? And the little butterfly wing is out. And then she's got an extra flapper right there, right? So all that just takes a little bit of figuring out. And then this one comes from, oh, I wanna say, I'm gonna say a name, but if I'm wrong, you're gonna have to tell me. Because it's, I think Carmen Melendez, but I'm not 100% positive. It was a, well, let's see if she wrote her name on the inside. No, I don't know exactly. This one goes this way though. So this was that Christmas set from a while back. So there's a tree and then Merry Christmas to you. So I don't exactly remember who sent that. because, But that's, you guys, these are the cards we looked at for inspiration. For this one so all right we need to do a little stamping though so we have these three things and we have this for our holly we also need to grab a piercing mat because these are photopolymer stamps and so we're gonna do a lot of cherry cobbler action right now you guys so grab your cherry cobbler pad and we're gonna do the poinsettias first and so just ink that up and you're gonna you have a strip of paper and you're gonna stamp one, two. So you guys should have plenty of 
because I think your piece was probably this long, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. And then on the inside of your poinsettias, poinsettias, you're just gonna dip that little guy right there. And so that's what we got for the poinsettias. So by the magic of TV, you guys, you can see mine are done here already. Hi, Shirley, I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> so that's it for the poinsettias, you guys. So we also need our sentiments though. So on here, you have these three. <laughs> this set was perfect for this because there was three different sentiments and they kind of flow very nicely. So the biggest one, it says thinking of you on this festive season, that one. These stitched rectangles are the same and they come from this stamp set. So you're gonna put here this right here, thinking of you this festive season. And then the A Joyful Christmas to you and yours can go here. Again, if you guys don't have this set, find some other sentiments. Do you have other flowers that could act as poinsettias, right? What could you work with? And then this uh, together is the, that one goes, I'm gonna put it closer to the top. So I'm gonna show you two different things. I'm gonna go grab another sample and show you another card where I didn't put anything on the bottom. And then you can decide what you, because this is really the only spot you have to be able to write a sentiment. So let me just, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna get another sample. So on this one, I chose not to put anything down there and you have a little bit more room to write. And if you do like this right here with these little holly berries, that's in the stamp set. That is also um, wherever the stamp set went. <laughs> I don't know where I said it even at this moment. Um, right here, as long as nothing falls, let's see. This, those are actually in here, the little berries and then the hollies are there. So you could stamp them if you like the way that looks, but I think I'm gonna be good. So there's that. Now let's talk about this piece right here. Um, we need our white ink for that. So let's grab the white, the dauber and the dauber and the white ink. One second. wanted to grab the embossing folder so you guys could see what happened here. So this die is a hybrid, meaning that it fits inside your embossing folder and it fits a certain way, that way. It must be like, hang on, kind of like clicks into place. So let's see here, that goes there. That doesn't go there. Hang on. Here. There. So, there. But you're, what, so Rhonda helped with this. And what she did is she started with a piece of paper. Hi, Sherry Stewart. Will you be able to do another card like this, but with a pop-up later in another class? Oh, uh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It would have to be a fun folds class. I wouldn't do it in a, a regular class. It's, there's a lot of stuff with this one. Um, maybe for another fun fold class in the future. So Rhonda started with a piece of paper and we knew we needed only to come to that bottom ridge. So she just had a piece of paper. So everybody has, so this gets run through the machine like this and it cuts it out and embosses at the same time. That's what a hybrid folder is all about. So when she did this, everybody is a little bit varying on their, um, how long that is there. And it's important because you, if you have it here, you're gonna have it sticking off the top of the card. So, and you want it nice and straight. So I went and grabbed my trimmer really quick because I'm gonna set this in my trimmer and line up that edge. So I'm gonna cut it using my trimmer. And you just want to trim off so that you have right on the bottom is that bumped up embossed raised edge right there. And then when you go back and test it, now that comes down to the edge 
and you might hang over a micro hair, but not a lot. And you could always trim off a hair more if you wanted. But that is something you are going to need to do um, to make sure it fits on there. And then you're gonna use some ink right here. And we're going to frost, let's get a piece of paper. We're gonna frost our leaves here. So let's grab. Grab a piece of paper, and you're gonna just dip your ink, your dauber in the ink. You guys lightly, lightly, lightly hover over. You don't need to add a lot of pressure because they're gonna get thick. And you're just kind of trying to make it look like there's snow on them maybe, <laughs> something like that. That soft, velvety look. Hi, Mary Schreiber. All right, so there's all I did was add, it just helps to show you some definition. Okay, that's it for the white. Done with that. So let's set you off to the side here. All right, now we can work on assembly. So I wanted to show you guys, I brought over, this is what I used for class last night. So people could kind of see how this inner thing works and gets put together. I mean, that's basically what we're going to be working on now. So we can do a little bit of gluing. So this and this and this. Now, we're going to put glue on all these. I think we're done with these. Yeah, let's make some room. All right. So little glue here and then on these two. So keep them straight though. That one's the outside. This just fits right inside of your rectangle frame. Good there. On this, you need to make sure, it's important, that this isn't down too far. You need it exactly in the center. <laughs> I promise you. It can't be too close to the bottom or you're gonna see it peeking out right here. So. Centered left to right, centered top to bottom, and a hair towards the top if necessary. And so I'm just trying to make it right in the middle here, just like that. And then this one, too, when you do this one, it's close to the bottom edge here, right? Because this actually, this piece gets glued. Like a three-eighths of an inch or so is glued. So you do want to have this a little bit closer to the bottom and not centered in the middle. So I'm keeping that in mind here. So shut this and I'm going to put this a little bit closer to the edge like that. All right. So I did pop this up with dimensionals. So we're going to do a few of those. And I'll put two right through the middle here. All right. That's going to go onto the card front. And again, I'm putting it flush to the bottom edge here. Like that. And kind of centered left to right. All right. So that's working on our front here. And the point set is, what I did is I have a big one up there and I have a small one here. And I made a note, I think in the PDF, that you cannot go below this edge here. If you do, when this card comes out, it's gonna get caught right here when it's out all the way. So you really can't have anything lower than this, this line right here. So that's important. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a dimensional here. I'm gonna use white ones. I'm just gonna put a white one in the middle of each of these. And when I put this guy on here, I'm gonna find the one that's more, it's more flat here, but it also fits in here good. So I want it to kind of nestle into the same. Oh, like that, that one's perfect. It's like the arms are hugging this, the S in season and I'm not going below the edge. And then this one, there's this one that has a bigger gap right here 
that's the one I kind of put right up there. And then you have your gold holly leaves. I used glue dots. So, hi, Stacy Burns. Hoping, hopping on later, we'll have to watch the replay. Thanks, Stacy. So we're gonna put a glue dot. So you either got two small and a big, or you got two big and a small. 30 of these holly leaves come in a, in a little container and there's 15 and 15. So some people got two big ones and some people got two small ones. It just was the luck of the draw. And so regardless, I'm putting a, a big one and a small one up here. And then I have the other one, either whatever you have left, big or small, I'm having that come out up here like that. All right, so there's the outside so far. I promise you, you should have little red rhinestones. And let's see where mine are. Mine are right here. So <laughs> got some oddball ones here. I think we're gonna use up the set of three, nice. So, oh, actually a set of two. And then there's an oddball one right there. So. You should have three little red rhinestones in your kit. You guys, they're stuck somewhere in between. We put them in between two pieces of white paper, I'm pretty sure, so that we could see them. And we double checked every all the way down the row that they were all there. <laughs> I hope that you're not missing them. If you are, for some reason you can't find them, you could always take white rhinestones that you have and you could color them with a red cherry cobbler blend. All right. <clears throat> now, the outside's pretty much done. So what we need to do is we're going to do a little prepping with tear and tape. I would recommend tear and tape. And look at this, you guys. I might run out of tear and tape tonight. So we're going to put... Oh, thanks for answering that, Deb. Yep, I always start at 6 o'clock. Tonight, you guys, it was 6.01, though. I was one minute tardy tonight. All right, so here's... Yeah, usually on Thursdays, it's at 6. Um, my, when I do Let's Just Stamp, it's generally at 1 in the afternoon. Soft Seedlings was supposed to be at 1, you guys, but Mom and I had to kit up. Um, well, I shouldn't say we had to. We got to kit up um, lots of cards on Tuesday, and we were waiting for UPS to make the delivery. When it arrived by the time I was done with class. UPS was here, which was awesome. I think they were, or maybe they were soon thereafter. But it was enough time for us to get everything kitted that we needed to on Tuesday. So you guys, what I did is I've got the, you know, the curve goes like this, and what I'm doing is putting the tear and tape through here. I definitely would not use liquid glue, you guys. You're gonna be mad at yourself if you use liquid glue. You wanna use some sort of double-sided tape. So, um, all right. There we go. So this is prepped. And this is prepped with tear and tape. So this is where the magic comes together, you guys. <laughs> oh, hi, Sue Somerville. So happy you're here. <laughs> all right, I'm rolling up my sleeves for this, you guys. <laughs> so, all right, let's take one off for now. And if you are over on your tear and tape, all you gotta do is flip it back and that's good. So what you need to do with this tear and tape here down you're going to, on the folded edge right here, you're gonna line up the cherry cobbler right there. So that's it, that's taping that on here. Yep, I'm thinking you guys, I'm like, did I do that right? Yes, so then this one is the one that folds back. All right, so make sure you have a nice curve to your paper because when you have that paper curved, that's what allows this to roll in and out so nice. All right. Now what you're going to do is open this up and you're going to set this in here. And I'm going to show you, this is my guide. I will honestly tell you, it took Carissa and me 30 minutes after the card was all figured out. We took it apart, put it together, took it apart to figure out where this needed to be to make it so that it opened up just like this. It was not the simplest of feats. <laughs> so what we learned is you, it has to be about, I'll give you a measurement, not my finger width. It is other side. It's like three eighths, half an inch, about from the bottom edge of the green. Hi, Barbara Godby, about a half an inch, not quite, maybe a little less. So you're going to set this in here like this. And you want your evening evergreen to be about a half inch to the bottom of the cherry cobbler. 
You want to make sure it's centered left to right, like this. Okay, get it in place. And now what you want to do is just test. Pull this down and make sure your white is covered. Boom, my white is covered. Had you glued this white thing, the middle one here, down further, you would see it. And you don't necessarily want that. I guess it would make it look different. Okay, so you got that. That looks all straight and nice to me. Now that you have that figured out, what you're going to do is take that tear and tape off. All right, peel it off. It'll be okay. What you're going to do is you're going to gently set this on there. Don't squish it down really hard. Let's just test it before you, because you can still rip it apart like we ripped ours apart a million times. Now what you can do is you can set this in here and you can practice. See how it works. Oh yeah. Okay. So if that's exactly, like that's what it should do. If that is how it, it works for you, now I encourage you, <laughs> give that <laughs> finger warmth to the tape to make it sure it adheres nicely. Okay? So now that you have that attached, right? That's how I showed people in class last night. That's, that's your mechanism in there. Now the easy part. I promise you, this is really easy. You take your tear and tape off. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold these sides down. You don't want that caught. This needs to go up and it should just like go straight down, right? You wanna make sure you don't have any tear and tape kind of sticking off the edge. I found that I just did right there. So I'm gonna roll that back and that just kind of folds down. And now it should work. Now I noticed on mine, I just realized it, that I did trim a hair extra. And so I noticed when I rolled my edge here, I've got a little bit of tear and tape just hanging out, being a pain in my butt right here. And it, so it's a little tacky there, but what you can do is if that happens to you, you can take your adhesive eraser and work at that and get a little bit off. But honestly, as long as it's not tacky and like catching things, you should be okay. And so what you might do is take just your fingers and rub back and forth. I, I only, this only happened to me because on this one, my panel was a little bit wider. This one, when I use, I use, um, when I cut mine, I used a guillotine. On this one, you guys, you saw I used that little um, Stampin' Up paper trimmer and I had it in just a little too far. So what you can do is just roll it. But you guys, that's it. Like, it's not that crazy. And so, who was it? Melody was asking about this card. So the thing is, Melody asked about how would you do this, like with this pop-up thing, right? It's ultimately this thing right here, but what you need to do is you need to account for it being longer, right? So ultimately, you have a piece of paper that comes down, it comes up a half inch, down a half inch, and then out. And you fold that before you, you, know, you, you just assemble that separately and you decorate it however you want. It's still the same concept for attaching it. It's attached here at the top. This person, um, Bobby used um, a clear envelope. Well, I wasn't all about cutting clear envelopes, you guys, I'll be honest with you. And to use the paper with it being cherry cobbler, it matched. So it kind of like blended right in. So that's it. If you'd, if, so this was seven and a quarter, make it eight and a quarter and then score it here, a half inch and a half inch. And then you could bring it out. You'd get that extra Humpty hump. And then in this case, you could glue something or attach something to it. Okay. So it's not that more, much more work to do that little extra bump out. All right, you guys, was that good? We didn't sell it anything though. I just realized that. So I don't know. I should have, I'm going to just Stella the outside of my cherry cobbler a little bit because I don't want to Stella on the white because that's already nicely done with white ink. <laughs> oh, that fold was, that is awesome. Good. You know, it's not, it's not complicated. Once you kind of get the, it, you know, seeing a live video really does help. <laughs> so yay. So, and then having the tab here, it really helps too that you're not going to fray your ends. So there we go. We are done with one of the harder ones. I think we're going to work backwards in terms of hardness tonight, you guys. We're going to do another one that is 
hard as well. And so let me grab that one. That one's going to be the Halloween. We're going to do the Halloween one next. Oh, Linda Hunt says it's pretty. Betty says it's pretty. Yay. Okay, you guys, we're going to do Halloween-y next. So that is right here. So this one's going to be the next one. I'm going to just move this stuff off to the side, you guys. So let me move that here. Okay. Ha, happy Halloween. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> this one isn't hard. It's just a lot of tasks. This one was cased. Let me show you. Two cards. <laughs> Two cards got merged together to become one. So this is from Anna Rebidu. She did this for the team swap party. We loved the outside ambiance. So she did this with ink blending. So vellum with ink markers, uh, the Stampin' Blends. All right. But we liked how she did her die cut with the stitched or the deckled rectangles. And so that's where we got this part from, right? Kind of I took the idea from here. We're actually going to use blending brushes. But then to make it a fun fold, I have this card right here which is from Mitzi Stanley. And that I had gotten last year from her. Isn't that pretty? So there's that. But then wait, I gotta find one more card. One second. my entire my all my swap boards to find this one this one is the same style so Tammy Sikolik did this one um, for our team swap party as well awesome so I got both of these cards in the team swap party and that's like oh this would be a such a fun fold to do so that's where these cards kind of the uh, casing the ideas the origin you know where they originally came from the idea gotta give credit where credit's due right guys so those are the inspiration to make this one. All right, so let's look at what you guys have. Now this one is gonna even be worse than the last one for your kits, you guys. You have five <laughs> little bitsy baby bats, <laughs> all right? And um, you have a moon over Miami and you have little black dots. <laughs> so the set that was used here is called Scary Cute also the deckled rectangles. And so what's happening is this die right here doesn't cut out like the outside. It just cuts out this inner area. And so by putting the deckled rectangle around it, that cuts out the frame. And then just know you guys, if you have this, if you want to, that house fits right in the middle, just like this. Okay, so you can get your house right out of the middle if it's just snugly perfectly. So one false swoop and you get your house and the outside frame. And then you guys have a second deckled rectangle, which is what is for your backing. Your bats and your moon come from here. I think I meant to use this, but I actually the we use stylish shapes um, banner instead. So uh, that's what was used for this one. So in your kit, you're going to have this piece of metallic mesh. This is great for Halloween cards, you guys. It comes in the annual catalog. Um, all you need to do is take it and you're going to just put your end in your end and make a little baby knot, right? That's all that's happening with this. No bozies on any of these cards, you guys. <laughs> oh, so that's all you're going to do is make a little bow tie type thing. Okay, set that off to the side. You have a little house in your kit. You have the banner. You have five bats, I promise. Two papas, two babies, and a mama in the middle, okay? And then the moon over Miami is out of the white glimmer paper, 
that it is the red and white glimmer paper from the candy cane. You have a piece of gorgeous grape that's embossed with the stripes embossing folder. Did you say it's purple time? Okay. <laughs> Chris, I wasn't even going to say it because I forgot about it. But you guys, this is the story about the purple. So Carissa, I told you she came over. It was Labor Day weekend on the Saturday. Um, we're sitting here making cards. We're like, what should we work on? What should we work on? And we were thinking about blending a sky for this one. And she listed off all these colors. She listed off like five colors. And I guess I apparently wasn't listening very closely because I thought, I thought she said purple. Um, and so I said, purple? We can do purple? <laughs> I love purple, right? And she's like, we can, but I didn't list any of those as options. <laughs> and we ended up with it being purple anyways. So needless to say, the joke is like, if I'm not paying attention or if like we're talking about something, I'll just throw in there purple, <laughs> like purple, <laughs> fun times, right? At Richmond High. So there's two more gorgeous grapes there for your panel right here. And then they have two matching designer papers. You guys, I tried to keep all of your paper so they actually are a pattern together. Like I, I did it as best I can. There are some ad hoc ones from the side, but they still should pretty much, you know, they should pretty much line up as much as, as good as they can, right? So these fit right in here, but we can't glue them yet. Don't even look at them. We have, this is what the, de the, the deckle rectangle looks like with the, it cut out. And then this is what a regular deckled rectangle, deckled rectangle looks like. You guys will have a piece of white, which is what we're gonna create our, our spooky background with. And you have a piece of white for your inside and you have your mat. The mat, is, or your base I should say, is four and a quarter and two and an eighth. So basically it's just folded in half. And then it's folded again right in the middle and it folds in like this, okay? So that's what's gonna create that triangle so that's it for that. Oh man, I didn't cut my little guys. Hang on. You guys also have two more pieces in your kit. And they are for the, I keep calling it, it's the dongle thing. So <clears throat> let's see, that piece could work. So they're like two by two kind of. And that could work. That'll be fine. <clears throat> really, th this doesn't necessarily have to have an exact size. Um, but what you guys have, they're like two and three quarter by two. I, they're the mechanism to make, I call it the dongle thing, like the dongly hangy thing. So let's just cut these at two and a quarter by two. Two is a good number because then you could just score it right down the middle. Yours are done for you guys. I'm just showing you how I did it. And maybe that's why I didn't do mine already, but <clears throat> two pieces of black here. And you're, they need to be scored. So grab your scoring thing. No, you guys don't need to, but in case you want to make this card again. So make sure you score. Dark is bad. And then, so this is at one. I'm going to just score it right down the middle. All right, so there's that one. And then another one right here. You can make them higher, you can make them shorter. It really doesn't matter. You can make them thinner. These are just the two pieces that you need for the this hangy thing to be on. All right, so you've got this one and this one. You take your bone folder, burnish them, burnish. All right, this is very important. You don't wanna get glue happy and start gluing down your panels because the first thing we need to do is we really do need to glue these down. And I tried to write in the instructions that you need your four corners, your four folds to come together. It's actually three folds, right? One here, one here, and one here. So these get glued right like this. And so then the tabs come up, All right? So a little bit of glue, let's make this happen. So this one, bring it right up to where the fold is. And then this one, so that's why it doesn't matter really how long they are. That one will come up right to it. Just like that. Yay, I'm so happy I remembered. So you guys, I made the first sample with Carissa and then I made three more. And on the three more, completely forgot about that process. And I glued my purple panel down, my DSP down. 
And then I really had to rip it up and wedge it down in there and just, it made it a little bit of a crafter math, but it, not, it wasn't anything I couldn't fix. <laughs> so now we can glue these. <clears throat> so let's flip all of this over. So I believe that these are five and five sixteenths by one and 15 sixteenths. You guys, I do operate a lot in sixteenths. It makes for good margins. All right, so that one goes there. And then this one goes on this side. So we're basically covering up that bottom portion of that flap. And then now we get glue here. If I know in class last night, Bonnie left that side up, which looks cool too. But I like the black. It reminds me of a, where is it where you, the spooky, where, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank, <laughs> like, you go into a fun house or a clown house or whatever they are where they scare you. Like the mirrors and such. It's just this triangle or the diamond fits this card, I think. So there's where those go. And those are five and a sixteenth by um, a one and eleven sixteenth. So now we've got the outside. You guys, So honestly, if you just remember that these need to get glued down before you put your panels, that will make your life so much easier. So that's done. Now let's, we're gonna wait on this for the moment. We're gonna work on our inside and some stamping. We're gonna blend in a little bit, so don't worry. We're gonna have that fun come in a second. So we need black ink and a dauber, and we need some other stamps. So the main thing on this one, guys, you gotta remember that this is over on the right-hand side, and we need a sentiment. So if you get happy and stamp your sentiment right in the middle, you're not gonna be happy with yourself because it's not gonna look right. So you do want to make sure you stamp the trick or treat, you're so sweet. And what you can do is just put this here as a guide, so you kinda know, and then now you can center it left to right, good. And then Judy Immel had me pull out the bats last night, we had the moon out. Now I didn't do that on mine, but you can definitely do it on yours, so this little moon be up in the sky here and you know what just to make it less confusing for people in class <laughs> tomorrow we're gonna put a little moon up there yep now it's good and then if you want to put bats on you can um so we're done with the yellow i didn't even write hi julie hillsman good evening to you i didn't even write this it's just an extra add-on thing if you want to use it because that moon is in there it's in the stamp set all right so the other thing here this purple piece, we took, we grabbed a dauber and we did lightly hover over and darken the edges. Of your stripes here, or your, yeah, there's the stripes. You don't need to press very hard. You're just hitting the raised area and it just makes it look spookier. And we need to stamp one more thing, and that is this guy right here. Our Halloween, happy Halloween, goes in there. Oh yeah, remember my trick, I go to the back first, and I have a hard time seeing white on white, so remove that away. We're gonna go and see what it does. Okay, I need to bring it up a hair on the right. Just a hair, oh yeah. That's all I needed. So that's it for the black. And we'll move all these things out of the way. And we'll get this put together. Nope, we're not. <laughs> we gotta do this. I'm avoiding this, but I'm not really. It's just, there's blending, a lot of blending. So how I do this in class is everybody uses the same sheet per the color, right? So the colors you're gonna need are the following, Calypso Coral, Melon Mambo, Gorgeous Grape, and Knight of Navy. So we're gonna do coral first, and we're gonna make ourselves a little room over here, and the bottom is the coral. So coral, These are blending brushes that Stampin' Up! sells, and they are great for adding color in a very soft, like subtle manner. And 
it starts off light and then it just continues to get darker and darker as you add color. Hi, Barb Johnson from Missouri. A little late, but we say better late than never. All right, so we're just getting a good start. I'm working my way off the paper onto the paper. I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Okay, and not get ink everywhere. Then we're gonna do Melon Mambo. So we switch out the sheet and bring in I do that is because there's ink on the edge of the paper here and you could pick that up with your brush and not even know it. So we're gonna do Melon Mambo. And I am working a little bit over the coral to blend them together because I don't want a very distinct line between the two. So don't be afraid to work your way into the coral. That'll help it. Ooh, is that pretty pink color. Okay, so there's that. And don't worry, it's gonna be a Midnight Moonlight. Um, who let the ghosts out tonight or whatever the Midnight Moonlight song is. Um, so it's okay if you have a little bit more streaky because it's gonna look like the sky. All right, so there's our Melon Mambo. Let's move him over yonder and grab Gorgeous Grape. Oh yeah, let's see here. You guys, I'm most excited for this grape. I'm gonna shut this so it doesn't. Pull the grape in. I have me some gorgeous grape. And now grape goes on the other side. So if you ask about brushes, like do you clean them or not? So Chris and I worked on these cards over Labor Day weekend. And I actually left these brushes as is uh, because I needed to make samples later. A, few, a couple weeks later, I made more samples. And then I left them all inked up and primed and ready for class so that I didn't have to clean them in the middle. But when I, once I'm done with class, I will go ahead and I rinse my brushes out and start them fresh. And so that is what I've got going on. You can see that when you hit the purple with the pink, it kind of changes the color right through the middle a little. If at any moment you want to go back and add, I know I went a little bit dark from the very beginning because I don't want to go back and do again. But if you do want it darker, all you do is go back and make it darker. And so I am gonna do just, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the coral. Now I always tell people, instead of going harder with it, just go back and get more ink because you don't wanna push so hard on those that it wrecks the bristles. So I'm good. Now, it's hard to see it, but maybe on the big screen you guys might see it. Um, you can see there's a little bit of darkness, like right there, and there's a little over there, and there's a little bit. So what we did is we took the Knight of Navy, and we swooshed it, just a little swooshing, right? So honestly, you don't have to do a lot. And you don't have to do it at all if you don't like it, but just adding a little bit of that more nighttime effect to it. So just adding. So I didn't mean to get a circle there, but it's okay. I'm okay with it because that branch is going to cut right through it. So um, just a little bit of navy. So next step, you guys see all those splotches in the background. <laughs> I think only one person in class last night worked, uh, made it happen and tried it to see what it's all about. So I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way. And we're gonna talk about that. I don't know if I've ever done this with you guys in a class, but it's using a spritzer and water. And so I guess I wanna take and move my stuff out of the way because water isn't good with paper products, right? So this is a spritzer. What I would recommend if, okay, you might be completely 100% happy with this and that's good. If you are, you can be done right there. You don't have to do anything more because that looks pretty amazing the way it is. If you want that splotchy look, what we did is we took this dauber and we spritzed water. And I honestly, Krista did it. So 
I'm not sure how it's going to turn out for me, but it's all in how much you squeeze it and how fast you do and the flick of your wrist and not hitting yourself in the eye with the water and making sure it's pointed the right way and not too close, not too far away. But you know, so if you're not wanting to risk wrecking this, then I think we actually did one and we didn't like the way it turned out. So we did another one, but, um, practice you guys practice on something that you don't care about so much, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it and I'm going to, I'm going to practice off the edge of my paper back there. Okay. Oh, Okay, I felt water, it hit my hand, it sprayed out very high, and oh, I actually got some. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. Okay, so I can definitely smell that I have rubbing alcohol in here instead of water. <laughs> so it's not really changing it very much, but it did give it this um, different sort of a texture to it actually. So we're gonna try it again. I got it all over my hand. I caught it with my hand. So it's actually making it look really swirly-ish. So we're going to do one more. See what happens here. Okay. And then I think we're going to call it good. So it is it is changing. I'm watching it. It's getting very swirly different patterns to it. And I wonder if that's because this is rubbing alcohol. I wonder if Chris is watching. She might know. Um but it did, it gave it, it gave it a little, it actually lightened it up a little bit and gave it a, a little bit of, I don't know, different look to it. So there we go. That's what that is all about. Um, yeah, it lightened it up. It's cool. I like it. I'm very happy with it. So I'm going to let it be, let it be, let it be. All right. Grab this back and we're going to Stella, Ella, Ella, this right here. The whole frame thing is going to be glitterified. Oh, whoever gets this card is going to be so happy. That's going to be good. And then the house here. Make sure you get the house with a little bit of Stella. You really can't Stella the bats because they're already silver foil. They're already pretty and nice. So for this, I would definitely recommend you pull out your black dimensionals. And we're going to put them in the corners here. And then I'm going to use some of these ends. Don't be afraid to use those outsides of your dimensionals. And we're going to put a couple there. And I'm going to put one right there. Perfect use for the black dimensionals, you guys. Halloween cards. Because it helps so that you don't see them. Because if you use the white ones, you definitely see that from the side. But when you use the black, you don't. So what now I'm going to do is put this over the top of this. And I'm going to eyeball it to see how much purple. You know, you got a little wiggle room. You could go like that. You could go like that. And I'm going to go like that. I bet you guys want to see it blown up and bigger. There we go. So that's what I got. You know, now you can see that, Stella. Look at that. Can you see that on the black? I can see it. It's very sparkly. And then what you're going to do is now that we got that popped up. So your, your deck, let's talk about the deck of rectangles. They match if you put them so that the rough side is back and then that smooth side is up, they'll match. But if you don't want to have that rough side, then you could put it this way. And then the deckling is going to be off ever so slightly and you'll have a different jagginess to it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So what's going to happen, we're going to put a little bit of liquid glue back here and then this just gets put together like that very cool all right let's find our card here and keep working on it we're gonna set our sample back there and we're gonna glue this and we're going to prep that. So with this one, we need just a little dimensional at the top, even smaller than that. Let's cut this little guy in half. I like to pop up the top of the house. And we're going to put liquid glue at the bottom so we can prep that. Our little white piece here is going to get glued on the inside. Right over here. Good. Good. The house now can tuck right in here. 
just make sure it's straight, but he should fit right in there. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Then we have these two things. And so we're going to use more dimensionals here. This needs to get popped up. If you don't pop this up, it's going to not have anything really to catch on. We're going to use that guy right there and one from this side. And then that will go on the inside. Doesn't matter which way, just something like that. You're going to see the white on each side. And then that, now that's popped up, it catches that, right? These, we could go ahead and do this. Put these, okay, so ultimately you're going to be putting adhesive here. And now that's going to get nestled right on top of there. So get the glue out. You could use tear and tape if you want, but the glue, you've got a little more wiggle room. So set this down, kind of center it, top to bottom, left to right. Okay, so far so good. You guys still with me? Yeah, Linda Hall says she can see the Stella, you guys. Yeah, I don't normally, you can't normally see Stella. That's that's on here now, you guys. All right, so there's Wiggly. Um, this one, what we're going to do on here, I'm going to put a dimensional. Don't put a dimensional on the little bit that hangs over because otherwise it's going to like kind of trip, make a trick card. So this is over on the side here. Should have looked. Make sure I, yep, I wasn't hanging over my dimensionals. And your bats. And you have a moon. So the moon, I recommend the tweezers. Helps out big time with the moon. So put a little bit of adhesive on the back. It's like I feel like a doctor now. So this is going to be scalpel. <laughs> the moon just tucks in there. And we've got a big papa bat. Yeah, the colors, aren't they amazing together? Yes, purple, pink, yes. So we got one bat, whoa, over here. Got my glue going on here. Put it right there. And then we've got the mama bat. I'm not doing a lot, just a little bit of glue and she's up over here. We got the little baby, a little one. It's hanging out down below. He's getting close to the house because he doesn't know any better. He's flying away from mom and dad. He's over there. Now you got two more bats left. They go on the inside. We're gonna do, you guys, you see what I'm doing? I'm not using my fingers to hold it, so I'm not getting glue all over my fingers. <laughs> all right, so we got another papa. Right there, and a widow one on the inside here. So, the glue, a little dabble do ya, and then got this one over here. Okay, we got our inside done. We got that. We got our little toggly. <laughs> yeah. Now we have our ribbon. Don't forget you got ribbon. A little glue dot is what you need for this one. You put the glue dot right in that little corner or the nook of the banner. And with it angling like that, just squish it right into it. Okay, and then you need your ribbon scissors. And trim your tails. Trim your tail, and then you should have three black matte black dots. So, a million dollar question is, where do I have mine? Because I didn't have any in <laughs> my kit. Let's see here. Hang on. next I think they're over on the counter so you guys have three dots that you can put on here one on, and then I've got two up there and so I'll go get them when the next time I get up so but otherwise that's what we got for your 
Isn't that cool? Oh, it's so pretty. Yay! Okay, but we're not done. So I'll have to make sure I go get some of those gemsies in a bit. Okay, so that one's done. All right, next we're gonna we're working our way back to the seedling card. I think we'll do that one last. So okay, we're gonna set him there because we're not quite done. Oh, we'll put him over here. So this one requires a little bit of work for you guys as well. So this set that's used uh, features the perched in a tree. And that set looks like, oh, I got a scissors here. That goes back here, my ribbon scissors. So that set looks like this, perched in a tree. Now, you don't need anything really for the outside except for a sentiment. It's the bird that's on the inside. And then all this die cutting is already done for you. So um, you should have some ribbon in your kit. You'll have some thick white paper. This is very, this is the wintry one. So you guys, we had Halloween, we had Christmas, we have wintry, and then we have a fall card for you for this fun folds class. Thanks everybody. I'm glad you like it. Yay. All right. So you guys should have about eight or nine inches. This is the soft succulent open weave ribbon. And you have a piece for your bird. The magic of TV, I've got mine stamped already, but there's a little piece in your kit for that. Um, you're going to have a piece of thick, basic white. And it is, in fact, it is scored already for you. It's already scored, right? Because it's folded in half and put in your kit. It was scored at five and a half. Okay, so five and a half. Let's talk about this. Hi, Sharon Land. So, you guys, this is what your card looks like. Like, the base. It's wrong, though. <laughs> I forgot to cut off a half inch on the bottom. So, just like that first card, you guys got to cut it to nine and three quarters. Like, on the first one, you have a little cutting. This one, you need to cut a half inch off. Just a half inch, okay? So, we're going to do that now. So, find your half inch. It doesn't matter which side. They're both identical. So, it will matter, though, once you cut it off. You got to make sure you keep them straight. But you'll know because one's shorter. So you're going to just cut off a half inch. Just get it out. Put it on your trimmer. Trim off a half inch. Do with it what you want. Now you have it right. Right? We needed that back to be a half inch shorter because this is really the front. Okay? Now that you got that, now we're on track for this card. So take your bone folder. You guys, I didn't burnish. This one had a lot of pieces in it. It's a thick, <laughs> thick card. All right. So, oh, there's my piece for my bird, but I bet I'm going to use that. So we're going to put this over here. All right. This is your strip. You have a piece like this for your sentiment. You have a piece of pool party. That's like four and three quarters by four. You have a piece of embossed vellum. It's embossed with the painted textures embossing folder. That goes over the top. You guys will have a branch and two sets of leaves in rich razzleberry, one in soft succulent, and one in silver. And they were cut out of the middle of your rich razzleberry to save paper. That's called paper conservation at its finest. And then you have this beautiful brush strokes, you guys. Literally, I had enough sheets of this <laughs> because I used this the, um, for Abigail Rose for the Blushing Bride. And I used the navy for the Sun Prince. And then I had all the green ones left for a card. I did sideways because my sentiment stamps were too big, so then I thought I would make it a sideways pull as another option. Yes, Kathy Jackson. That is a good thought. And that's exactly the card one of our samples did too. So that one, that what Kathy's talking about is she did it as a side pull, just like that. Yep, that's you guys can do that, absolutely. It works that way too. So you have one last piece here, and this is 11 inches, and it's scored a half inch here, and then it's scored at a half inch, it's scored at five and a half, and then I believe six. So that's the scores we got going on there. So what you wanna do, let's take it and go ahead and burnish it. So you guys just have yours folded in one spot, but you wanna take it and fold it on all. And then there's one more at the top here, like that. All right. So, what do we want to do first? Let's get glue happy, I guess, because we can. Um, so, oh, you guys didn't even see the inside yet. Look at the inside. <laughs> it's a shadow box card. Yay, it's 
so pretty. All right, so we're, let's put the, the boxy part together. So you need this piece, and this is your top. It opens like this, and then this piece fits here. All right, now I'm gonna say this to you guys. If you need to trim off a hair, like when I cut these, I tried to cut them at four and a quarter, but it could be a hair one longer than the other. So if yours don't exactly like line up side to side here and you have like a little bit hanging off of one side, now is the time to do it. Trim off if you need to. Otherwise, um, put it so that the thinner one is on the inside or cut off if it's too thick. Like if you need to trim a hair, now is your time to do it. Because what's gonna happen is these will get glued, these two panels get glued together and then this comes up and then this gets glued right here. Okay, because then this will eventually lay flat. So. Let's glue our back panel to on. And, oh, Lynn says it's so pretty, yeah. Okay, so there's this one. It's just gonna go right back here. And it kind of goes up into the folded area here. Like that. And now, before we do this part though, we wanna make sure we get these two pieces in here. So, you got your pool party first that just gets centered in here and then because the vellum you don't see the edge of it you can go ahead and put the glue around the edge you normally we are cautious about vellum because you see through it but with this card you only see the window and plus if you press down it helps the glue to disappear because you have that um, embossing on it. All right, now I'm not gonna use tear, or I'm not gonna use glue, I'm gonna use tear and tape here. So ultimately what should happen, you're gonna take your tear and, oh, you guys, I got to the end of my roll, look at that. Let's see if it's enough. Ah, oh, it'll be enough. So throw that in the garbage. And me being me, I'm gonna actually go get a little more, <laughs> I'm gonna get a little more, hang on. <laughs> I got a fresh roll, it's so big. Look at this new roll of tear and tape. All right, I wanna get to the edge. I should have had it go to the edge. So let's take a little piece and then another little piece. And what I'm gonna do is they're gonna go over the edge just slightly, but that's okay, because you can just roll it back. Same here, you can just roll it back. Now here's, I guess, what I would say to make this as easy as possible. Instead of trying to do this in the middle of the air, put this flat and you should just be able to set that right down. I see that. I want to make sure I'm over there. You should be able just to just fold that right down onto it, right? I mean, that that's really it. So short side back. So Sherry, this was the long side. This was the short side. And the two short sides are the same on each piece of paper. So this was the, cause this, this front longer side is your traditional A2 size. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. So you want that to be your top here. Okay. And now that if you use your, like the heat from your fingers, that will help secure that glue even more so that when you open it up, it'll be nice and good. <laughs> All right. So check these out real quick. Make sure that Oh, I just realized that I don't have a, the birch here. I gotta go get a birch piece from my kit. Hang on. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm saved. And I remember to get black dots here for this card. So we'll do those in a bit. So this is cut out a thick white. Oh, you're very welcome, Sherry. I hope that made sense. Um, this is cut out of thick white. I like it to be popped up. And what I'm gonna do just to test it, I'm gonna make sure, you're only gonna see a little bit of the rich razzleberry, but it's enough that you can see the edge of it. And then what's happening is this actually goes over and that covers it up. But I like to pop things up. So I'm going to pop this piece up and I'm gonna, create little tracks here. So we're gonna grab this, that, and then cut these off because this gives you really thin ones. 
and they fit nicely along the side here, along this side, over here, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So this is what's great about cutting off the edges is it gives you these little strips. That little guy can go, oh, he didn't wanna stick. All right, so this is gonna go there. We're gonna use up this. So I'm gonna try to get a few more pieces in here. So one can go there. Now you could have definitely glued this flat if you wanted. You don't have to pop it up. So this is gonna go here. And one up here. I feel like I just need one more over in here somewhere. And you know what, we'll make it go in half. All right, <laughs> but now that you created all this um, edging, <laughs> you need to pick it all off yet. So, but that's pretty much what I've got. Oh, I might just do one more right, right here. All right, so now you can get pick happy and grab these guys all off. And then this is ready to go. And so I think what we'll do is adhere our rich razzleberry first, and then we'll put the brush strokes. That brush strokes vellum is, or it's like a vellum kind of, um, that is in the annual catalog. So we're gonna flip this over, put this on first. It's a thick card, you guys. Really thick. Okay, so that, just try to center that. You're not gonna see a lot of white, just a little bit. And then you've got this one that goes on next. A Little bit of glue there. It's gonna cover up your leaves that are taken out. And now this is ready to go and this just goes right on the top. This one's gonna be hard to get it centered, but do your best. Something like that, so. All right, <laughs> we're, we're coming together. We're coming along here, guys. See, we got our inside, we got our outside. Um, Let's Stella, so we can Stella a few things here. So, let's see where my piece of paper went right here. <laughs> Grab this guy. So we're gonna Stella a few things. Might as well, right? So I think that this perched in a tree is one of my favorites, favorite bundles in the little mini catalog. Um, I don't believe it's in stock at the moment. It was on low inventory and um, I don't know if with free shipping, it kind of went out. I, I, can't, I guess I can't remember. So we got that ready. Let's, we got to stamp this actually because we gotta get our leaves put together next. So let's get this stamping out of the way. <laughs> Not much stamping on this one, you guys. So this one says, no matter the season, I am here for you. And we're gonna try that first on here. And I've got it over to the right a little bit. So let's try that. Oh, I got a halo. Don't push so hard. right on that right side. That works, okay. So it's more to the right because that leaf kind of fills in that left-hand side. I love this die, can use it with so many different stamps. That's you betcha. All right, so we're gonna put you there and we're gonna need to grab our espresso as long as we're stamping. Let's get our stamping pants on here. We're gonna make the bird, 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 bird is the word. It's gonna go right there. And then there is a little pool party ink. You guys, what I do is I take a block, and this is left over from last night. I didn't want to throw it away. It's so full of glitter. It's full of pool party and glitter. <laughs> um, what you do is you take your Stella pen, and you dip in to where the pool party is, and you can color in his little neck area and make it a little bit 
blue in areas here. Just a soft little blue. You gotta be careful though. If you hit the brown ink, you're gonna get brown mixed up in with your pool party. So just doing a little bit of blue just to give him a little shading. All right, so that's it for that. Then on his tail though, I'm gonna use a different Stella. That one doesn't like me. It seems like it's dry. So we're gonna try this one. So a blender pen or a Stella pen, and you can just take and blend the ink like this, and that ends up coloring it in. Oh, I'm doing the wrong one. Ha <laughs> ha, so that one's done. I should be doing my Magic of TV one over here. So you guys get to see that all again. So this one was stamped a long time ago, <laughs> about a month ago. And the ink is probably pretty dry where that one, look at the difference. You can see it's a lot darker because that ink was still a little bit wet. So brown has undertones of red. <laughs> Did you guys ever notice that with brown? They, it has, there's a underlying red dye in there, I think. And so you gotta be careful with that. So we're gonna grab a little bit more pool party and do his neck again. Well, not his again, but do the process again. So you can use your Stella pen to color things, you guys. All right, that's it for that. I think we're ready to assemble now. So let's not lose anything. You guys like what happened last week or two weeks ago. Oh, I almost lost a leaf underneath my mat. Thank you to, I think it was, oh, I don't know if it was Jean Turbeliger who pointed out. Save the day. All right, so that's gonna fit here. And what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm actually going to, there's a like a little method to my madness. I know that this leaf is gonna go here and this leaf goes here, like that, okay? So what I think I'm gonna do is just prep, oh, my tear and tape is right here. I'm gonna prep a little tear and tape. Which side? This side. And I love the tree and leaf dies. The bird is growing on me. He seems to be a bit big for the other pea. He is, he's so not proportioned right. Let's go, yeah, I definitely get it. He's a, a big bird. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this here and then I'm gonna put my little leaf back here. That was about like that. I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, so that should stick. And if you need to move anything, you can still wiggle things around if you want to. Like I might want that leaf right over there. Okay, so that's ready. Now we're gonna prep the back of this with tear and tape again, because we're gonna be running ribbon back and forth. So let's have this ready and waiting in the wings is what I say with my tear and tape. This gets picked off and now grab your ribbon and you're gonna have one tail coming up like that. You're gonna, oops, I gotta catch the tear and tape. So have this catch the tear and tape back here you're gonna come up and make a loop like that. And that's where I have my tear and tape waiting. I'm gonna put that on there right away. And then this one comes down, make a little tail. And now I've got that other piece waiting here to go right over the top. And so I've just kind of woven it back and forth. All right, you can still finagle things if you need to or want to. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna glue this flat. So I'm gonna take that tear and tape off. And because I don't know exactly where I want glue all over here, so I'm actually going to just put a little bit of glue on my tree trunks here, 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 and there. Yeah, and that's good. And then this should, and then there's gonna be one more, right on this one right there. And then that will go right on the edge here. Something like that. Then I forgot I was gonna put a dimensional back here behind that one leaf to help that. And I was gonna put a little, or another one behind that one to make that look a little popped up. And this one we're gonna glue flat and put it right on the label here. It should fit right there hopefully. Yes, very nice, very nice. And we gotta trim our tails of our ribbon. So we're gonna put them at slants like that. And this one. I want it a little shorter, I think. So let me just, ah, oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> we'll be fine. All right, 
<laughs> that's what I got for that, okay? Now the inside, let's look at the inside. <laughs> okay, so we still got one more card. I hope you're all doing okay. All right, let's open that up. So I would do, so here I did cut off my branch. So the branch overhangs the circle. Anything that's in the circle here, you do not want to put glue on. So what I'm going to do is kind of eyeball that I need to put glue over here and right about there. Okay, so you're gonna have to kind of eyeball. You don't want it in that middle area. Okay, so it's like right there. Okay, any glue that is on that back side of the branch is gonna eventually stick to that. And you don't necessarily want that. Okay, and then this one, if you need to pop any pieces out, you can. And that just goes, you gotta be careful too. You don't want any glue that's coming up over there and I should have thought about that. But, oh, I got a little guy that needs to get poked out. And if I have extra glue, I'm gonna just take that off. This is gonna come right down here. Like that. Bird. You can only glue his feet and the edge of his tail. I think, uh, let's see if that's gonna stick. All right, feet and tail. Really, that's it, that's all you get. Stella the vellum, and it looks like a shiny DSP, it sure does. Um, we're gonna do this on his tail and his feet, you guys, that's really all you can do. So, his t feet and then the tail are gonna catch over on the side there. Um, we gotta get him on the branch. Okay, so let's get his tail right there. So Hildy said to Stella the, that vellum in the background. So what she means is taking the Stella pen and just back and forth. You can get some Stella back there and make it really pretty. We tried to make it look like a wintry sky back there is what we were going for. All right, iridescent rhinestones. Let's see if I got some handy. No, and I didn't grab them out before class. So I have, a, I think you guys all got a big one. So let's make sure the bird is good. He's good. And then, so I got a big one for you. Sandy loves the cards. Yay. And then we'll use some of these. Yeah. Soft, succulent, and rich razzleberry, yay, are the winning colors here. And if you pull in these iridescent rhinestones, they are my cotton candy rhinestones. I love them. They just take it over the edge of glory here. Look at that. So, oh, I put one down there. Ha ha, let's take you off and maybe put you right there. Maybe we'll put him in just a hair. I don't know. You guys can put your embellishments wherever you want. <laughs> That's what I got for you. And then it's called a shadow box card. Oh, we're not done. <laughs> Wait, we got to trim this little guy off. <laughs> that won't fit in the envelope otherwise. So there you go. Now I think we're good. So boom. <laughs> like it? <laughs> it's good very good very good okay so let's go back to this one I found my black dots here and we're gonna put one there this little guy over here and one more over there there we go okay you guys got it in you for one more we gotta get one more uh, knocked out here so we're gonna keep keep her moving so that one is the one. That's the class card. Here's my sample. Goes over here. And now, this one, you guys, we made it on Tuesday in the soft seedlings class. And when Chris and I were working on them, we made this one first for fun folds. And then we made another one for card buffet. And when we were all done, we were like, gosh, these are really cool. Let's make a class out of this. And so that's how this came to be. So this one is actually probably gonna be the easiest one now that you guys have gone through all those other three. 
<laughs> and so we're gonna take a drink of water though before we keep going. <laughs> I showed this on the other day. Oh, here you guys go. I forgot to show this. So the shadow, shadow box card comes to you because this is the card we case. This was Pamela Leahy. She made this card for, I think, the Winter Creative Escape last year. I set it aside because I'm like, oh, it looks like a normal card on the outside. But then when you open it up, boom, there's your little robot dude. And it says, Happy Valentine's Day. So she did stamp a sentiment here on the, um, on the inside. You could also use the back to write your love note. But thanks to Pamela Leahy for this inspiration here. And then for the next card, you guys, this came from, I think, Cindy, Cindy, Mindy Gray. Mindy Gray, this was her peach card. And then we married it up with Ann Bellinger's leaf card here with the soft seedlings. So these were the two cards that we merged together to come up with that one. <laughs> so that's what we like to do. We get ideas from swap cards and Pinterest, just like you guys do. And so and this is your five and a half by four and a quarter. And I've already got it scored. Okay, I have to tell you guys. You might want to double check your scoring. My, I noticed that like 28 of them, I had scored the wrong, this side over here. And I just recut them and did them. But some of them may have sneaked through, but I don't think so. I think that I double checked everything. If it is, all you have to do is reverse the score line by reversing, like um, scoring it backwards, you know, the opposite way, and then rescore it. Um, it's just a half inch from each side and then a one and a quarter inch in as well. And so what happens is you're going to score these, not score these, but fold these back. So you're ultimately going like this and you're going to do that on this one. Now this one's already embossed with the leaf fall embossing folder. And so all you got to do is go like that and then fold it back. And then this one goes like this. You gotta be more careful on the embossed edge. It's not gonna always wanna go as easy. It was scored first and then embossed. All right, so let's get glue happy. I'm gonna actually use tear and tape instead of liquid glue. It's gonna work better, I think. And just kind of rip off what you need. And that's gonna go right there. And if it's too long, don't worry. You can always just fold that little edge back then at least the tape gets all the way to the to the edge. And this one too. Like that. And I'm gonna bring it a little bit more. Alright, so that's prepped and ready to go. Now, important to get this straight, you guys. If you have it crooked, it's gonna be all wonky on you. I should have said before you put tape on too. If you line these up together and you find that one is a hair longer than the other one, just get your trimmer out and trim it. Like when I cut it in half, they don't always get married up together. So you might have one that is a hair long and that's not the end of the world. You just take your trimmer and you cut it. All right, so let's do this side. I try to get the corner lined up and then get my edge straight and then kind of make sure it's good going this way. And then all you should have to do, as long as you got it straight, just set it down into it. And hopefully, that's that's basically what you gotta do. And then you can take it and you know, hold the tear, you know, make that tear and tape. The heat from your fingers helps with the tear and tape with it bonding. All right, so then what we've got, some liquid glue you're gonna need. So that little half inch margin, these are little 3 8 inch strips and they are from He's All That, or He's the Man Sweet. So you can just take and put a little glue on that one and put that down on that side. And then you're gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Because I got that liquid glue, you can wiggle with it. All right, then, <laughs> apparently, by the magic of TV, I've got mine stamped. I must have gotten stamp happy when I was working on my kits. So let's talk about it. I bet a bunch of you guys, how many of you, give me a thumbs up if you watched me on my soft seedlings class. Um, Kelly is also going to be doing a Technique Thursday next week about this. 
And so what I want to do, I, I, apparently I've got mine stamped already. So I'm going to talk about what I did. So the Sam set is called Soft Seedling. So it looks like this. We did the class. This card was made on Tuesday. And so that's where all this stuff comes from. And what we've got is the Cajun Craze. You just ink up. But my ink pad is super juicy. So what we did is in class, it took us a, one table got done and then we figured it out for the next one. You just take the, when you have a really juicy ink pad, this is such a detail that you can't afford to have a really thick, gooey ink pad. So you kind of use a sponge dauber and then you can dauber it up. And what I might do is show you on a piece of scratch paper. I've got a piece right here. So what you're gonna do is take your ink pad and you can dauber this up. You guys gotta watch Technique Thursday with Kelly next week. She made about three or four different combinations of leaves. And so what you can do is ink this all up with your dauber. And then the other part, the seedling part is in crumb cake, which is not that one. Maybe this one, we'll go with this one. So you just dauber that up. So then you don't have to try to hold the stamp, you know, the ink pad to the stamp. And this is what you get when you are trying to do two different ink colors on one stamp. And you know what? We'll just put it on the back side of this so that you can see what's going on. If you wanted to add color, you could put some cherry cobbler around the edges with another dauber and give it like a two-tone effect. So that's all we did. We're just going to put this on the back. All right. So those guys over there and that turned out nice right because it's nice and soft whereas I'll show you what happens we realized this on, in class on Tuesday if you go into your ink pad and your ink pad is really juicy yeah actually after we had class last night I bet it took out a bunch of ink out but it's just it's not as soft looking and that's okay. Like if that's what you want a little darker that you did. Oh, <laughs> Kelly did this today. Did she do this today? I could have sworn that we, um, she taped it for next week. I'll have to look into that Linda because we put it as not published. I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering if you saw it, maybe we didn't, um, do it unpublished. I'll have to look into that because Linda Kelly did do this. And she, I don't know, does this sheet look familiar to you? Because she showed this, and that was meant to go live next week. So um, we'll have to see what happened. So, all right, good good thing we'll have to check into that. <laughs> she had a technique Thursday that she put live today, and then that one was supposed to be for next week. She was trying to get a week ahead. <laughs> so if you guys saw it, then we didn't do it right. That was us learning how to do it. So that goes on the back, you guys. All I did was stamp a little seedling from the top there. And then this is going to get glued flat on here. And that goes right in that middle panel section. And then I'm gonna pop this up with some dimensionals. And That'll go right on the front. You guys, we saved the easiest one for last, I promise. Aren't you glad we started with the hardest? We That's what people in class like to, they always fight over the hardest one to do the hardest one first so that their brains are fresh. All right, and then for here, you guys will have a little piece of linen thread. You'll have about eight inches of this. Oh no, Sandy. Well, I'm gonna have to tell Kelly we didn't do it right. She's gonna be sad. We're gonna have to um, unpublish it, I think, and then republish it next week because I know she's not gonna wanna do another one next week. <laughs> oh, we did it wrong. We did it wrong. That's why I told her we needed to schedule it. I was like, we shouldn't do it that way. Um, like we were looking at it and I wanted to do it one way and she's like, well, if we do it wrong, we'll just figure it out. I'm like, okay. So you guys, I just put tear and tape on the back and then this tail comes out that bottom end here. And then I loop back, I grab a piece of tear and tape, put that on here, and then it catches that other tear and tape, make a loop, and then bring my tail back. You guys should have enough ribbon to do that. All right, so now you've got your tear and tape back there, like this. 
And then you need to take that linen thread and kind of put it right in between the middle of your tail and your bunny ear, and then bring it up the other side. And that just adds a little extra element to the card, just having that. And then what we're gonna do is take our dimensionals and put them. You can't put them far, too far on the other side though, right? So you're gonna have it hanging over. So we're just gonna take, not leave that side so there's no dimensionals. And now that just goes right over here. And then we're gonna trim the ribbon, this linen thread, just a little. This one, just a hair. Trim your tails. And that tail actually, oh, just a hair. I was gonna say it looks really good, but we'll just do a little bit. And then grab your pig tool and we're gonna untwist this linen thread so that it looks like a little messy, like undone on purpose. All right, just to, because that's how it is outside with leaves. Everything's messy, right? So just unsplit them and it makes it fill up and just adds a little element to it. But we're not done. You guys should have three of the brushed metallic dots. Now remember mine came and they were all mishy mashied, so I'm still continuing to use them. So we're gonna put one there. You either got two big and a small or two small and a big. That's how we did it, so we alternated so that um, it would use up all of the gems evenly. So I'm gonna just do that. And if you got a big and a small, you could put a big and a small at the top and then a big one at the bottom in case you got two big ones. All right, I didn't pull out Stella. So what I would Stella on this is the, the frame here, that Cajun Craze frame. Just like that. Go all the way around the world here. And then the top. Okay. Whew. I think we did it. Got to clean up my hot mess here and make a little room to bring the cards back to have you tell me which one is your favorite. So we have, I there's something it, I like. This is an easy card to reproduce, you guys. If you needed to do a fun fold swap, this would be the one. She did the glitter drops video today. Oh yeah, the enamel. Yep, she did. And then I think we she, she tried to tape the next one for next week. And so I'm gonna have to go in there and change the settings <laughs> so that not everybody sees it. And then here we have our Halloween. Happy Halloween. And then we have the Christmas. So, all right, you guys. You gotta tell me. I don't know which one's your favorite. Oh, they're so hard to, to pick and choose. They're all four different. And they're all four different folds. Um, there's something about this one that's calming and relaxing to me. And then this one is just so, it's spooky, but I love that background, that the sunset or whatever, the spooky background. Um, yeah, this one's really soft and soothing to me. Like this one just makes me happy looking at it. This one does too, though, with the razzle berry and the soft succulent. The Christmas one. So what the general consensus is that people really liked the Halloween one last night is what I got feedback. And then... Um, this one, people said nobody's getting this card. Everybody was saving it. So love them all. You guys love them. Halloween, Halloween. Yeah, so cool, you guys. So that's what we have here. Um, Donna loves them all. So yeah, so we're going to have four lucky people next week that are going to be happy that they win these cards, I bet. So, oh, they're so cool. So cool. So, all right. We got some business to take care of, though. Um Let's see here. We're going to pull out my list, you guys, and move these out of the way. And they are just so fun. All right, we're going to move them over here because they'll be ready for next week then. And we're going to do the drawings, the drawings. All right, so we have these four cards. We have that stamp set. 
and we've got names galore, you guys. Names, names, names. So let's do this. Um, hard to decide. The Christmas and the Halloween are really dramatic, but the other two are soft and serene. Yes. The perch in a tree is your favorite, Melanie. I love it. All right. So you guys, we had ink, paper, scissors last week, Thursday. In case you missed it, the it's in YouTube and Facebook. The main thing that's going to be different, you guys, about the videos is the replays are, I'm going to be sharing the link for the YouTube video in the news feed in Facebook, but I'm not going to be sharing or uploading videos into Facebook. The video is only going to reside in YouTube and it will be shared to Facebook. So that's going to be one major difference. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to draw video watches out of my YouTube video because now that I'm over a thousand subscribers, I can apply for the whole monetization thing. And if people are going to be watching my videos, they are going to put ads in them. And then I could make a little extra <laughs> to help um, pay the bills, right? So that's why I want the YouTube to be watched. Like, and I won't be uploading the videos. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's why, and also you guys, it's so much easier in YouTube to search for things. I was showing Kelly today, like where to find things. And she was like, oh, that's really easy. Not like Facebook. And I've been hearing that with everybody with Facebook. It's so hard to find things. So that's for multiple reasons. And so th those are all the reasons. So just know that if you're looking for videos, it's and you're going to be from like basically Tuesday on, you're going to find them in YouTube or before that, you're going to find them in both locations, Facebook and YouTube. But always know the easiest way to find the link for the video is go find my event on my events calendar. And the first thing underneath the cover photo is always in case you want to watch the replay, here is the link to watch it. So yay. So try to make it as easy as possible for you guys to find things. So we're going to do um, the ink, paper, scissors from last week, you guys. So in case you missed, I have one set left, you guys, in case you want, I went into class with eight of them or nine of them. And I came out of the last week with one left. So in case you think you missed out on this one, I have one set left. Um, so Ink, paper, scissors, featuring splendid day. Here's the first card that we made. Da -da -da, drum roll. Brrr. Winner, winner is Connie Moore. M-O-O-R-E. Connie Moore. I love it. You guys, we had like 78 people, I think, watching today. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Um, this is our little pocket card. So that little piece comes up. And then you can stamp a little sentiment or write a little love note in there. Da -da -da, winner, winner, chicken dinner is Darrell Hoffaker. Woohoo, Darrell. You got this one, girl. Hi, Marsha Long. We're all done with making cars, but you can definitely catch the replay. All right, we're going to do this one next. Da -da -da. Have a don't turn yourself once again. Great job. Thanks, Shirley. I appreciate that. Um, this one, winner, winner, chicken dinner goes to Diane Kennedy. Diane, I don't have your address. Darrell, I have your address, but I also don't have Connie's address. So I'll need Connie and Diane. Last but not least for this one, you guys, this was the um, gourmet card. Da -da -da, winner, winner, chicken dinner is, let's see the inside. And the winner is Janet Flay. Woohoo, Janet. I have your address now. Oh, so speaking of, I said that's the gourmet one. My mom called this one. We were kidding this up last week. And my mom called this the couture card. Um, and I'm like, couture? She had to explain to me, you guys, I really didn't know that. That meant like the catwalk and walk, walking down the aisle, like the runway. And it's like the cream of the cream, like crema de la crema of the, like the best of the best. And so she called this one the couture card. Not just gourmet, but couture. <laughs> so yay. All right. So I learned a new word. I mean, I maybe thought I knew that, but I don't know if I did. So you guys, we have the monthly creative challenge, the class card challenge, the VIP half off bundle, the free shipping drawing for the snowflake set, which was just around here too. Maybe right here. Nope, not right there. Nope, not right there. Where did you go, Joyful Flurry? Hmm. Okay. And then I got I got the top fans. We'll do those first, you guys. Winner, winner, chicken dinners. They, I can't do a, a random drawing anymore with that because I can't just download the names. Top fans are Ann Miller, Penny Powell, Judy, Dean, and Christina Brome. Woo! Congratulations to the top fans. You guys will get a prize from my vault. Ann, Penny, I know I have your addresses for 100% certain. Judy, Dean, I don't. And Christina, I can't remember if I have your address. I know I've seen your name a lot watching my lives, but I don't remember if 
I actually have ever gotten your address if you've won a prize in the past. If you have, I don't know if I saved it. Um, so if you don't mind, Christina, sending me your address, I would really appreciate it. So Judy and Christina, I need your addresses pretty, pretty please. All right. The joyful flurry. Oh, it's on the table over here. Hang on. All right, so we did, we're gonna do two drawings. So I did a drawing on free shipping day. If you placed an order over 50 bucks, you got your na name in for the drawing. And we're going to take this down, go to random number generator. We had nine people. So we're gonna put in here nine and go to random number generator. One moment, please. All right, <laughs> this little thing is always over there. Okay, so we're gonna put a nine. All right, drum roll da -da 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 for the joyful flurry stamp set. I have the big screen going really f close here. So we're gonna hit generate and see who wins it. Two, Tammy Steckling. All right, Tammy has got this one. So I should probably do, I wish I had Kelly here. <laughs> so we're gonna put a post it note on here. And put Tammy Steckling. Hopefully you don't have that, Tammy. All right. Now, for my VIP half-off bundle. So, if you are... I have a VIP, Cards by Christine VIP group. It's not a page. It's a group. It's a private group. And you are invited if you've placed an order with me in, let's say, the last six months to a year. You've bought in a product-based class. Or if you're my team member. You're on my team. I don't always think to go and invite people if you are a new customer to me. So, that's why I always say this. Help me help you, right? Um, I'd love to add you. We need to be friends on Facebook and then I can add you or you can request to be added. It's just called Cards by Christine VIP group. And what I do is every month I do a showcase video. So for the month of September, I did a showcase video and I grabbed all the 11 names of people who said that they shared it. And what I do is I give them first dibs. I'll draw a name and they get first dibs. And then if they don't want it, I go to the next person because sometimes people have it and they don't want another one for half off. So so I have 11 names. And so going back to the VIP, if you're not in the group and you've done one of those three things, like place an order with me, bought in a product-based class. Oh, Tammy says, yes, love snowflakes. Um, you've gotten a product-based class because that includes product. Or if you're on my team and you're not in that group, please reach out to me. I don't go on a monthly basis and cross check who's in there, who isn't. But on a yearly basis, I'll be like, okay, somebody hasn't and been in my life for two years, I do remove people from the group, right? So you gotta stay active with me to be in the group. Um, so what I do for this drawing is a random number generator and we have 11 people who commented on that showcase video that they shared the video. So I do it based off of who shares the video and you just tell me if you shared it and then I catch your name and I put you in for the drawing. So we have 11 and the first person is number nine, Deb Norman. Deb, are you watching right now? Deb Norman, it would be half off um, plus shipping, or I can hang on to it till you come up here in a month for the onstage bus trip. So Deb, let me know if you want this. Um, if you don't, I am going to pick second runner up would be Ann Miller, okay? So Deb, you get first dibs, and then I would, if you don't want it at half off, I would offer it to Ann. So Deb, if you're watching, Oh, you are still watching because you just said congratulations. So, Deb Norman, would you like the Leaves of Holly at half off? If you do, you can just comment right now, and I will make sure we settle up on that. Congratulations. Yay. So, now my rule is Tammy has won, and Deb has won, and Penny, and Ann, and Judy, and Christine have won. So, I have two drawings left. And... What I have them for are the class card challenge and the monthly creative challenge. And so if anybody who's won something, I like to spread the love around with the prizes, guys. So um, what we'll do is we'll draw the other names. If it happens to be somebody who's already won, then we'll pick somebody else. But for the monthly creative challenge, it's out as um, a challenge. So the very, it's pinned to the top of my Cards by Christine page. And what happens is I have a theme. There's three different themes. And you have to post a picture of a card following the theme. And it has to be using current product out of the Stampin' Up! either mini or annual catalog. And you have to call out what the theme was and maybe the stamp set. I can't remember. So what I did is I grabbed everybody's names. And what I do is a random number generator. And somebody wins a prize from my stash. And I do that every month. And so that's what we're going to do drawing for next. So I grabbed 10 names for that, you guys. I grabbed the 10 names out of there. So we're going to do a random number generator. 
eight, Barb Johnson. I think you were watching tonight, Barb, as well. So congratulations to Barb. And then I also do the class card challenge. Uh, that's where I try to... Mary Carls, I'm seeing Jen Jen Um. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Mary Carls. I'm seeing Jen Jen Um. <laughs> um so class card challenge is... I love for you guys to put together the card kits that we make up. It is a labor of love. You're going to pass on the bundle. Okay, Deb, thanks for letting me know. So we're going to check with Ann Miller then if she is interested in it. All right, Ann Miller, I know you are watching earlier, but I don't know if you still are, but we'll check with Ann Miller. Thanks for letting me know, Deb. Class card challenge. It's a labor of love, you guys. We don't do, we love doing it. But we could be doing other things too. But we love kidding up cards and getting them into your hands, right? And the last thing I want to think about is them sitting on the floor by your desk or wherever you create and collecting dust, okay? That would make me sad. So I try to encourage you guys to get them, put them together, and either keep them and cherish them forever, put them on a mantle, or actually use them and give them to somebody, or making more from that idea. Or, hey, you know what? If you're a, a discount shop or demonstrator and you love to stamp with your friends and family, taking my samples and then recreating them and making more of them and sharing those kits with your friends and family. Regardless, I just, I, want, I, want, I love knowing that you guys put cards together that we kit up. So I ask you to take a picture and it's always, to keep it current, it's gotta be this month or the previous month. So this drawing was for September. So these were for August class cards or September. And um, I pulled all the names and so we'll do a drawing. So I like to give a prize. And so it's an incentive, hopefully, for you guys to make the cards and get them put together, right? Um, I know life happens. So you don't, don't ever feel like you have to be rushed to ever make a, you know, card from one of my classes. It's just to help promote you guys to do them. That's the whole end game, right? So, um, so I had 13 people that I pulled their, their names from for sharing pictures. So, and also then you guys get to see different ways of putting the cards together because you don't always have the stamps like I have for making the cards. Ultimately, we try to design the cards in a way that you can recreate them exactly with very little change of stamps um, because you might not have that focal image. Um, hi, Angela Knudsen, trying to figure out the closed caption thing. And it says, I can't so I can watch but not listen. You know, so that is a good point. Angela, I meant to bring that up. So we're going to finish the class card challenge drawing and then we're going to talk about closed captioning really quick, you guys, because I have a thought and um, we were trying to figure it out on... Tuesday. So we're going to flip the camera down. You guys, I have 13 people that submitted cards. And so we're going to number 11, Karen Forward. Awesome. So Karen, you won a prize. Um, and so the other thing was that you guys could see what stamps other people use to put their cards together if they don't necessarily have the same stamps as me. So, all right. So congratulations. We had Barb Johnson, Karen Forward, Deb Norman, but de deferred it to Ann Miller. Uh, Tammy Steckling, Ann Miller. Um, oh, we can't do Ann Miller though. Hmm. I might have to pull a different top fan. If Ann declines the bundle, then I will pull, keep Ann as a top fan. If Ann wants the bundle, then I'll pull a different top fan so that we keep more love being spread between winners. So, um, closed captioning though, you guys. We were trying to figure out how to get closed captioning on this because if you guys are watching with me on Facebook, it used to have closed captioning up there, right? You used to show it. And what Angela said and a couple others said is they didn't have the closed captioning. So I Googled how to turn on closed captioning, um, how to turn on closed captioning in your, and it's something in your settings. They told me to go to your settings. So go to settings. Go to let's think about this history and purchases and try new features, notifications. There's notifications, um, video autoplay, data saving general. And there's a way to turn on your closed captioning, guys, because I know that Angela said that she likes to watch while she's in bed and not have the volume on. And um, then she can read video search language location. Who knows how to turn on the closed captioning? It's under settings. And you know what? You know how to do it. You just go um, here. You look up how to 
turn on closed captioning YouTube channel, click on your profile picture, click settings. From the left-hand menu, click payback, playback and performance. That's right. Okay. So click on your picture, click on settings, click on playback and performance. Where is it? General data saving autoplay. Da, 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 da. Well, on my computer, I found it. It was, there's a playback and performance. And then it says check or uncheck, always show captions. Check or uncheck, include auto-generated captions when available. So on my computer, it had that option. So playback and performance, you guys, that's what it's under. So Angela, I don't know if you can find it on yours or anybody else that wants closed captions. Captions! There's a captions. Let's see here. On! Yay! You guys, who was looking for closed captions? You can have default language, the size. You could have it small like that. You could have it very small. You could have it very large. Takes up the whole thing. Not good. Bright, white on black. Default is going to be I'm English. Eh? Okay, on. Boom! Let's see if it worked, you guys. Go back in here. See if the closed captionings are gonna be. But I guess maybe because I'm already in the video, I'm not quite sure. But you guys, some of you were looking for that. It says none are available. Okay, so I have closed captioning turn on. So Latoki is saying that none are available. So interesting. Well, maybe that's still on me then. We just went through a whole lesson and maybe it really didn't solve the mystery. So I'm gonna go see if there's something I need to do in my settings on my YouTube channel to allow the video to have that closed captioning because I just literally changed it. Now I'm curious if I could go see it on somebody else's. So we'll see. And maybe it'll start at some point because um, I'm watching the YouTube video with you guys right now and it's actually at the point where I just started to search for it. So we'll have to see. Not sure. Okay, but we're not done. We have one more drawing, you guys. It's not a drawing. I already have a winner because I did a drawing earlier. So the newsletter, you guys. Now that we have all the winners picked, I'm gonna work on writing a newsletter in the next day or two. Uh, so newsletter is, there's a secret hidden question in there. And I think the question was, what was the question? What is your favorite Stampin' Up! color? I think is what it was. I wrote these down. Jean Terwilliger, Starry Night. Um, lots of Tahitian Tide, you guys. Melon Mambo. Um, and then I didn't write them all down, but I, I started to write some and then I didn't, but Tahitian Tide by Sharon Land. So winner, winner, chicken dinner of the newsletter drawing is a $10 gift certificate towards product. It is not towards a class. I always have to say that. It has always been for product. And so the winner, winner, chicken dinner is Sue Volts. Uh, she won a $10 product gift certificate for me. And so she can pick um, something out of the, the annual or the mini catalog or the clearance rack and she'll get $10 off of her order. Oh, so Angela, I saw that you sent me some pictures on Messenger, so I'll have to take a look at them. So so congratulations to Sue Volts. She won a $10 gift certificate for reading the newsletter and answering the secret hitting question. I always put one in there. So come November, you guys, or we're in October, I'll have another newsletter. The door prize, good goal. Thanks, Sherry Martin. See, that's why I told you guys everything I wanted to do early so I wouldn't forget. You knew I was going to forget. I knew it. So... Good call. So anyways, newsletter, you guys, coming out in the next day or two. I'm not sure if I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get it started tomorrow, but I know I might not finish it, but by the sometime during the weekend, it'll be published. All right. So I said we had 18 people that placed orders. So let's go back to our random number generator, you guys. We'll flip this down. Go back to random number generator. We had 18, and I like it. Generate. Number 14. Donna Jarman. All right, Donna, you are 14. Donna Jarman, you will also win a prize for me. And what happens with the door prize, for what I do with this, my deal is it goes in your next class package that has, is going out. So you'd have to take another class to get that prize, which most of you guys are generously, generally always taking back-to-back -back classes. So Donna Jarman, you are the winner of the door prize. And so I will include something in your next class that I have going out um, from my stash. So yay. Okay. So I turned on my, uh, thank goodness, didn't get in the door prize drawing 
in the summer. Thank goodness didn't get in the door price. Yeah, because what would happen, Melanie, is it wouldn't um, go out until you had your fun folds going out. Right. So I have a couple actually here. I don't know if anybody is still watching, but I know I have a, some cards here for a Kathy Groves. Kathy, um, this was from March actually. And then I have Barbara Schaefer and Linda Grady. So um, you guys, I would have prizes for you. I'm waiting <laughs> for you guys to, Linda and Linda had signed up and then she decided not to. Otherwise I would have had that gone. <laughs> so, um, oh, so perfect. Deb Norman, we'll do that. Um, we'll trade if, if that, if Anne wants that, that's what we'll do is you'll do top fan and then Anne would have the VIP half off bundle. So that sounds like a good deal. If, um, hopefully Anne is up for that. So, all right. Now I think we have everything. So congratulations to all the winners. Yay. So exciting. Okay, you guys, two hours and 40 minutes. Fun folds always takes a very long time. What's nice now is when I end this, you guys, you'll have the replay forever and you will be able to start and stop me as much as you want. You can go right to the part where the, where you need to see it again. Um, but, um, hopefully that's good. So Mary loved all the, the card designs. Yay. So, all right, you guys, tomorrow is Friday I'm working on things. And then, um, Saturday I have, um, fun folds. Yeah. So fun folds tomorrow night, fun folds Saturday. And I think then we roll into next week. I have no idea where this week went. You guys, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's almost gone. So I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> my days go pretty quick. It's a pretty crazy. So, um, if you need anything, reach out though. I'm here to help. Uh, my information was down below. I can get you signed up for any classes that you want to get signed up. Uh, if you're waiting for an email from me, it's only because it's from today. I got caught up on all my emails from basically last week through today, uh, through last night, basically. So I'm excited about that. So woohoo! feels like the weight is off my shoulders. <laughs> all right, you guys, lots of sunshine, love and hugs. You guys have a good rest of your night and we'll see you later.